Hey everybody, I am Velocerix, and this is part 7 of the Greek takeover game. Uh, we are well into spoiler territory now, and we have, at the end of the last session, we had conquered the city of Tushpa. Well, we are in the process of conquering the city of Tushpa. It's, it's considered neutral territory for the next four years, and then it's going to flip to our side. So, we have some challenges ahead, because although we have shattered the army of the Assyrians, they are, they still pose a threat, right? I mean, they've got They've still got 10 cities. They can uh, rebuild military. They can attack our battered units. They can make a push to recapture Tushpa. So although we have made epic level progress, we are certainly not in a position where we can let our guard down uh no we are nowhere we are nowhere close to that however tushpa you can go back and look at some of the previous videos tushpa uh was oh it still shows okay so there's a strong culture so that dinged assyria's they've they've lost that so they that dinged their score which helped close the gap now this is going to reset when the city capture is finalized and uh, so it'll start at, you know, weak culture, but it's already got improvements in place. So it should, uh, yeah, okay, right now it's not generating anything. We'll check it once it flips. And it should uh, start generating culture pretty damn quickly. So that'll, you know, we'll get one point initially when it flips. And that'll put us neck and neck with Babylon again. And then as it grows, and it'll grow quickly then our score will continue to increase. Now, also worth mentioning, we are very nearly at the end of the tech tree. We don't really have a lot left to do. I mean, we've got, we could technically research all of these texts and uh, go on to, uh, at that point, start researching these essentially uh, future tags, but here is the thing. Um, Babylon has better tech than us, so they are probably already done with uh, with the tech tree. So that means they're already researching these. That, that's not great for us, right? I mean, that that's not. Uh, yeah, we that we need we need to be doing that too to mitigate what they're doing. But we also, so now the reason I'm mentioning this is because now we are uh, in the part of the game where we need to start thinking about, okay, how are we going to win? Yes, we took the city and that's awesome. Uh, but how, how exactly are we going to win this game? Yeah, okay, so they've already researched three uh They've already researched five uh, future tags, and that's what's given them the points that they're jumping ahead on. So we need to do that. We need to be doing that plus other stuff if we want to close the gap. And and we can we can totally do that. Uh, but we're going to need a strategic approach to make that happen. So for one thing. We're probably gonna need uh, to switch from philosophy to engineering because that's gonna give us a 25% reduction in wonder cost. And we're gonna build as many uh, late game legendary wonders as we as we can. So this this probably needs to happen before we start spending money and stone on 
wonders. Uh, let's see what other changes, if any. You know, we don't have a lot of shrines. I'm not sure that that's really helping us. On the other hand, having more civics is always a good thing. So uh, I think, and even though that will cut into our orders nominally, I think that's a worthwhile trade-off. So in terms of, you know, like we have some other laws we can implement and we should, especially once we change to legal code, every time we adopt a new law, we get more per turn civics. But I think this is, is absolutely a thing that has to happen. And I think I want to do this for sure. Now, I am tempted Uh, it would hurt our science, but I am tempted to go with autarky because it would increase our, our per turn stone by a lot, by like 61, right? So if we're going to focus on building late game wonders, late game wonders take a crap ton of stone. This would be another way to get some of that stone. However, it would hurt our science and we're trying to research future tech. So eh, it's kind of dicey on that. Don't know. On the other hand, this would actually would actually help us a lot and we could probably pay for it just because we switch to uh, legal code because it's going to cost us 36 civics, which is the same as six laws, but we're running more than six laws. So legal code essentially pays for trade league if we wanted to, to do that. Coin debasement allows us to buy and sell orders. Now we're using our money for other stuff right now. I don't know how much value we get out of that in the short run, but that could be helpful. We're not really having any happiness problems to speak of, so I don't know that we want to sacrifice yet more civics to the altar of happiness. Uh, can hurry units with money. Again, we don't really have a lot of spare money right now. Uh, so I don't know that either of those would help. State religion cities is plus one order per year. What's it going to cost us? Nine civics. Okay. Or we can build shrines in every city. But we're at this point in the game. I don't know that building shrines is going to really be useful for us. On the other hand, uh, bulking up orders. So the question then is how many of our cities are uh how many of our cities are have our religion in all of them so yeah so we could get we could get nine ten orders right nine well ten when the when the city we just captured flips so that would be useful So, because we the legal code cost us a little bit of orders, but this would more than make up for it. So yeah, that that would be that would be useful. So let's adopt monotheism. Okay. So those are the changes we'll make on the law front. Now we've still got 31 orders in in this turn. Uh, I don't think we have any more combat moves. We necessarily want or can make not really okay and the other thing I've had I've, I've been asleep I've, I've been able to get some sleep and I have decided that we are going to have to deal with the Assyrian Navy at least uh, we're going to have to start dealing with the Assyrian Navy, and here's why. The first city we took, Tushba, is not coastal. His Navy can do absolutely nothing about that. However, if we plan on taking these two cities, uh, Tyria is coastal. Now, granted, he can only get one ship at a time. 
you know, adjacent to the city center to bombard it. But he will. I mean, when we move in and when we take this, you can bet he is going to station his ships all up in here. And he will constantly bombard this Navy. Which means that we are going to have to leave. It's going to tie up a big chunk of our army because we're going to have to leave enough guys here to do battle with his fleet and sink ships. And he's got like a dozen ships, right? We saw as after we killed three. So, and we could, we could do that. We could grind his Navy down. But if we want to free up more of our army to go take the next city, then we're going to need our ships to carry some water. So we're going to need to build some more Dromans. We're going to need to like get a, a decent number of them, start slowly creeping them up the coast. And then just, you know, with our army units stationed here, uh, then we'll attack with the fleet as well. And of course, he'll still have more, more ships. So he'll still have superiority on that front. But when we take this city, we can pretty well guarantee that most of the naval action will happen right here on the coast. Because, I mean, that's why he's going to bring the Navy here is to bombard the city and try to get it back. Which means that it's not just our Navy. We're going to have our Navy. We're going to have our onagers. We're going to have our longbows. We're going to have any infantry that are on the coast. So that's going to give us a lot more firepower to make up the difference of the fact that we don't have uh as many ships so i would prefer to just completely ignore his navy and gut all of his cities and we're done we're not going to really realistically we're not going to be able to do that because terry is not the only coastal city right so as we penetrate deeper into assyrian territory we're going to be confronted with the same thing we're going to have to keep doing that And we're going to have to keep doing that until he runs out of ships. So, yeah, one way or the other, we are going to have to deal with his Navy. The good news is we don't have to, we don't have to come from behind, build more ships than he's got, and then confront him Navy to Navy and beat them that way, which is what I was originally contemplating doing. We're not going to have to do that because I can leverage the the fact that the AI is going to be interested in hugging the coast to try and bombard future cities that we take to get them back. So that's going to make him vulnerable to our army, which we now know is very much stronger than a serious army. And we can progressively grind that Navy to dust. So that's that's kind of what we're going to have to do. We're going to send a trade mission because this this is worrisome to me. Uh, we're going to steal some tech if we can. I'm looking at the wrong. Oh, she's already on a mission to do that. We're on a mission to do something. No, she was slandering. That's right. I wanted to steal tech and I got an event that gave me a... A free mission and I took it and I probably should not have because we could use the tech way more than slandering Assyria but whatever we missed that opportunity we will not make that mistake again so the bottom line is though uh, once this conscript finishes I'll go ahead and get back to building ships uh, same thing once this conscript finishes the ship is right there in the queue, so he's ready to rock and roll. I am going to uh, go ahead and add the Droman back here. And in fact, I think, yeah, okay, we'll do that. And let's see. Now, uh, I need, okay, this, this time, rather than building more conscripts, 
I'm going to set this guy to uh, run council. That's going to give us a 100% bonus on money, civics, and training points. Now, I could set it to do this continuously, but I don't want to do that because I want to be forced to reassess if that's what I want to do every year. I want to have to think about it and make that make that decision every year. Okay, and I'm, I, we need more infantry for the next phase of this war. He's just going to stay right where he is. But now that we have made the switch, now is the time to, let's check out our, uh, let's check out our wonders. Okay, so we could build Circus Maximus. That's going to give us, like, what, a, a that's 10 XP per year for mounted units, spawn point for mounted units. Gives us 40 training a year. That's handy. Uh, Pantheon. We get two civics per year per culture level for uh, state, religion, cities. That's handy. The Sophia gives us happy and just a flat 40 civics. And the Via, but we don't have luxuries in city, so that one really won't help us a lot. Although the caravan every five years would help us because we could send that to uh, Persia and progressively get our and this is actually a fairly cheap uh, wonder to you know late game wonder to build as as they go that's actually relatively cheap although uh, at the moment we don't have the civics to do uh, any of these that's the that's the stumbling block so we but next turn we will have the civics that we can do one but these are going to take a while to, to produce, so but that's an important source of victory points, so we need to, you know, kind of get on that. So that probably means that as more of our cities finish stuff that they're building, that we need to put them to running council so we can get the bonus for civics so that we can get the civics quickly enough to... Uh, actually start a number of these of these wonders uh, and I think yeah because we're desperately low on food so I think we're just gonna we're gonna focus on giving our workers jobs right now we're gonna do yet more stone because although we need food, right, we also, if we're going to build, especially if we're going to look at building a number of these, then we're going to need more stone for sure. Okay, well, that's up next to a mountain. So and now that this is, you know, for a while I was like not excited about using my worker because Assyria had troops up here and oh my gosh, that's scary. Yeah, it's not really scary anymore because they don't have an army to speak of anymore. So, yeah, we're not we're not too concerned about that. I'm going to move him first. We're actually going to give him a guard promotion because right now we're again until the city is captured, we need to drop into a defensive stance, right? We 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 don't want to uh, go crazy on the offense. We're we're defending right now, and that that's what we that's what we need to focus on. And I am going to send this swordsman up because he's fresh, right? A lot of these guys are battered all to hell. So uh, next turn, I mean, he may attack us some more. He probably will. He probably will attack us some more, and we're gonna pull our 
torn up units back to our lines to heal them, but I need to have something to replace them with. So this guy's healthy. He's coming up. Uh, we have a new conscript. He's coming up. I don't, I don't really have a lot of troops that, you know, uh, are perfectly healthy right now because we've been fighting really hard for uh, 16 years, I think it is. These guys are reasonably healthy, but I can't afford to... I can't afford to pretend that there's no troops here because there are a few. But we do need to... He's reasonably healthy. Okay. Yeah. So what we need to do is pull everybody back closer to the city, right? Uh, I'm actually going to give him besieger because we're going to use him on the next siege. So we need to pull these guys back toward the city. And that way we're... we're we're, we're minimizing the chance that he can retake it. Well, he's got no chance to retake it anyway. But by compacting my force in and around the city, we can uh, have overlapping fields of fire and help defend each other. And I can swap really badly units out and put less badly wounded units in their place and this just gives me a lot of internal line flexibility to move my troops around as needed to make sure nobody dies and he doesn't have a chance of actually taking the city so that's the that's the goal that's the goal we just have to ride out the next four years do what we can do to get the army into sh uh, back into fighting shape and then we'll be ready to uh, attack. And, and from here, this was, the, this was the long slog part of the war. The first 16 years we were fighting mostly defensively, you know, slowly grinding his army down. Once we had them to the point where they were weaker, then we went on the offensive and just completely shattered his army took the first city, and from here, everything will start to go faster because we don't have to do that anymore, right? His army's gone, essentially. So we're in good shape. Okay. So we already have all the laws that we need. Uh... Okay, so we lose an agent or the Yeah, let's uh yeah. We're just gonna kill him. Okay. I'm not even gonna research any of these. We're gonna do uh, military prestige because this is researching future techs so we're gonna each time we get one of those that's a victory point right now we're just racing for victory points to, to the end of the game that's that's essentially uh, that's essentially what we're doing Do we necessarily care that the Christians are getting persecuted? I don't. Okay, yeah. So that's going to piss her off even more, but we get a new guy, and that's, and that's fine. Uh... How are we doing with family relations? Okay, well, everybody's super happy with us. I don't know that we 
we don't necessarily care about okay the war elephant has been seen well yay Saul has joined my court. Now he was a court soldier, as I remember from from the event. So let's just take a quick peek. Like, do I? I mean, I I didn't really have a lot of generals that I could assign because we're mostly using our talented people as governors. So what do we, who do we have here that could Saul? Okay, so he's a zealot. Uh, that's going to hurt him defensively, but we're not playing a defensive uh, game at this point. I don't know that that really matters a whole, whole lot. So yeah, we'll put Saul the Zealot in charge of our in charge of our swordsmen. That's that's fine. Okay, and the only city that we had complete anything was the one that we had set to run council. So we'll just put him to run council again because that seemed to be working. Now I do like the the via because it it gave us something that I that I liked, that I was impressed with. But let's, for, first, let's find a worker. A worker who is now free. Okay, but this city is not legendary, so let's find a worker in and around a city with legendary culture. Okay, well, that's none of these. Okay, Syracuse, and uh, that's this, right? So, Wonders. Uh, oh wait, why did I lose all of my, no, no, no. So I need 300 civics, I've got that. And what does the VIA give me that I like so much? Requires an adjacent city center, replace uh, plus one happy per luxury, which is not great, but creates the caravan. And we were going to use that for diplomatic uh, reasons. And it has to be built next to a city center. So we could actually, we could come here, right? We could... Clear cut these trees no. no we don't want to build a road there okay and then so the via what why are we not requires an adjacent oh okay I, I clear cut the wrong tile. Durr. Well, let's take all that back. Okay. And then this guy, let's move him to here. That is adjacent to the city center. Right. So then we, yeah, so then we can just do this, like, like now. The only problem is, why is that going to take him 17? Oh, they all, okay. Okay, so we're just going to start this. 17 turns from now, we will have it. And we just need another 300 civics 
we have the stone. Okay, so we would need 700 civics and we would need food. So we would have to sell a lot of stuff to get the food. But we could we could do that. We, when, when we get another 300 civics, if we decide, okay, Circus Maximus is next, then, yeah, we'll just sell whatever we got to sell and we'll make that happen. And then we'll, you know, start on another legendary wonder. Because again, we're looking toward the victory. We're looking toward the finish line now. So we have a future tech cooking. That's one. That's going to take us to 37. We have a, a late game wonder cooking. That's two. That's going to tie us with Babylon at 39. This city is about to flip. That's another point. That's going to put us to 40. Okay, so now, you know, we've got some momentum cooking and we've got victory points coming in from a variety of sources. And he didn't pull back at all. He, he, he pulled back rather than attack. So he didn't attack anything at all. And I'm going to start the new uh, unit count. So for round one, we lost nothing. And I don't know that we're going to make any attacks against him either, to be honest with you, because our army is in bad shape. And what we really need to do is attend to some promotions, get everybody kind of... I, I, th I, I think we're actually... Okay, well, unless he comes at us, I'm just going to fortify here then, because I, we're going to have to go north anyway, right? So I, I do want to leave. I think this is okay. These guys could actually reach here if we needed to. Uh, so let's do, we can't heal these guys, because this is still hostile territory. But we can't promote them. And by the way, don't discount the combat promotion line. I know that it's only 5%, but the thing is combat, the, the, the level one combat promotion is only 5%. But it applies to both attack and defense. Like guard is great. Guard gives you a plus 10 defense, but it does nothing on the attack, right? So it's only useful half of the time. Combat less of a per, less of a percentage increase but it's useful whether you're attacking or defending so it it's i think better than a lot of people give it credit for i'm all about some combat if i don't have you know uh focus or besieger or something like that combat combat's great it's a versatile useful uh promotion that is basically always on that makes it pretty powerful. So, yeah, combat. Okay, so let's get. We got a, we got a pretty stout defensive line here. We've got. Uh, we're doing promotions. I'm pulling back my. My, the worst of my wounded troops are getting them patched up and ready to fight. Okay. Yeah, see, he's in the city center. We don't, we don't want to mess with that because we're not ready to take. Well, it's going to be a while before we take that city anyway. So, yeah, we're not doing that. All right, so let's just pull everybody back. Now, I don't, and we have to, we have to leave at least one guy here on this open ground because we have to provide cover for our, uh, for our onager. But on the thinking that if he attacks, he'll bring his elephant down and he'll hit the most vulnerable guy, which will be this. I'm going to put my pikeman right next to him so that the pikeman can whack him uh, when we 
if we need to. Pike one will be right there. Uh, yeah. We got the swordsman. And oh ooh, no. Okay. Well, actually, we need to rethink some of this. Okay. Uh, this guy. Come on. Give me this guy. He needs to come home to friendly borders and heal because we've only got one of those. I don't have the food to upgrade another horseman to cataphract. We got to be super careful with this guy and we need him. Now, one thing I don't want to see happen if his elephant attacks Tushba, then he break, then he pushes me out of the city. And I don't, yeah, I don't want that. So we're going to put these guys on just open ground because we have to. And we'll fortify. But we need to guard against uh, an attack on the city center until the capture is complete. I don't want anything to slow down the capture of Tush, but we need this to be friendly territory. All right, so we'll fortify here. Everybody's kind of hold up, and I'm not. I'd, we've got our worst wounded troops to friendly territory, and we're healing them. It's only three turns till the city flips. I'm going to leave the rest. They're in reasonably good shape. I'm going to leave them there unless we have to shift gears. If we get attacked, uh, and he presses us super hard, you know, then okay, we may have to pull some more guys back. But for now, I think I think this is I think this is fine. Now let's turn our attention since we have Tushpa defended. Let's turn our attention to the Battle of Tyria because that's that's next. So Tyria has walls. We can see that, right? So they have walls. We used like five, six catapults on uh, Tushpa. One, two, three, four. We used five. But we don't have five catapults down here. So we need to we need to transfer some, right? Because that made the siege fairly quick and efficient. And we want quick and efficient. And we're going to have to leave at least one catapult behind. Because we need to pour fire on his navy, which we know, we already know, his navy is going to, you know, be dickish and try to take the city back and whatever. So we have three. So we need at least two of these catapults to come south. Uh, one, two, three. Well, here's one that we never even bothered to move. So there's four, right? And then, so we just need one more of these. Not this one, because this one's on a hill. He's got more range. He can protect from an attack from this side. So we're just going to take like this guy and how far can we get him? We can't get him very far because he's a catapult and he moves really slow. But we can at least get him to the coast and now next turn we can actually use our waterway to transport him across the, the ocean. And I've got the training points. I could force march him and get him there like now. But we're not ready to attack right now. So that's not really critical. Uh, but that gives us enough catapults to get the job done over this way. What other assets can we move? Uh, these guys that are healing, they may join in the attack. I, I don't know that we'll need them, but they are at least in a position where if we do need them, we could do that. Now, in anticipation of the attack, I am going to move this spearman over here and give him a heal because he's like a hit point down. And we want, what the hell? Okay, come on, dude. Heal you, right? We want him to be full health when we start the party. Uh, okay, we want 
the conscript because and you'll notice I put the casualty counts in uh, the description of the last video and you'll notice we lost I think 12 units and half of them were conscripts and that is that is the real value of conscripts if you place them well then you can let your most of your casualties fall on conscripts which preserves your mainline battle troops which preserves your military strength and it just makes the fighting well easier right because you're losing crap troops you're killing the ai's good troops and yeah you keep doing that over the course of many many turns and you win so that's that's really i mean there's no there's no magic or secret sauce to it you just you just engineer situations where you know you're trading not great troops for his primo troops and you just keep doing that time and time again i think we're gonna leave these conscripts here because we have been seeing kind of a steady trickle of you know religious dissidents this and religious dissidents that and i don't want to have to I don't want to tie up my good troops to deal with that. So I think we'll just leave a couple of extra conscripts in the backfield. And, you know, when that shit happens, then we'll just let our conscripts beat them. It might not be as efficient. It might take a little longer, whatever. But yeah, I, I don't see that there's, I don't see there's a lot of value in tying up our, our good troops to have to deal with religious dissident as well yeah okay oh we got a promotion here uh what do we got let's see besieger shrapnel some cool thing focus focus works okay Greater chance of a critical hit on a unit that does splash damage. Yeah, I like that. He can't promote because he healed. Okay. And I think we're going to bank those orders. The rest. We got the wonder cooking. We don't have the civics to build another wonder yet. Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to hold right there. Uh, and we're sending, yeah, we're sending a trade mission out. So, okay, I'm just going to end the turn. I'm pretty happy with that. So in two more turns, we should have another 300 civics. We should be able to start another wonder. And that'll give us another two victory points in the, in the hopper. So that's good. And next turn, we will begin advancing on Tyria. But you see, um, like, and there's, there's absolutely, by the way, there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing the game from a pure uh, tech and research and, and wonder building perspective you know you, you could you could absolutely win the game doing that you build your cities up to legendary culture you research every tech in the game you start researching future techs and so now you're building your legendary wonders and you're getting victory points from future techs and that's awesome and you're you know you can totally win the game like that so we could have if we had wanted to we could have once the military was built just you know sat behind our our big army and 
gone the peaceful route and totally done that. And that would have been fine. But by engaging the military, we're adding another dimension. We're adding another source of victory points because every city we capture reduces a series of victory points, increases ours, and then as they gain culture, that increases ours further. And if they have uh, religious buildings or wonders that they've built previously, then that increases it further. So it just gives us another avenue to earn victory points. And so that's what you notice. We're, we're making a three-pronged approach toward victory. We're researching the future text. We're building the legendary wonders and we're attacking and taking cities so all of that is working together to uh, uh, all the way from Babylon King Hashish the brilliant is unhappy with our well we don't really care about Rome uh, yeah, okay, sure, let's just give them some iron, we get a favor, and kiss, kiss, nice, nice, whatever, okay, we don't want that, yeah, you guys are just going to have to be estranged, we need the, the discount of the thing. So again, here, you know, this is, we get, we get uh, four, by, by choosing the, the bonus that goes that's associated with the higher score, we're just going to get more stuff, right? Bottom line, we're going to get more stuff. And I don't care about tribal opinion. And I kind of care about religious opinion, but it's only plus two, whereas this is plus 30. 30 being bigger than 2, give it, you know? I mean, that that's the entire line of my thinking. Okay. And he did make a couple of attacks. We made six attacks. Let's not, let's not downplay it. We didn't kill anything. So, I think, well, this is actually round 3, because round 1, we lost nothing. I don't know if it's round two. We'll just call this round two then. Screw it. So us, we lost nothing. Assyria will not be able to say the same thing, but let's check it. They should still be very much, they should still be much weaker than we are. Oh, they have moved up a notch. They are just, they are just weaker now. Okay, asshats. Uh, first thing, we are going to move you back to where you were. He broke the fortification and made it move, which I thought he was going to do that with the with the uh, conscript, but then I was thinking he was going to attack, try to attack the uh, onager. But it made more sense that he was, you know, trying to get his city back. So I, I get that. I would love to give this guy his promotion. Unfortunately, we are not going to be able to do that. So we will simply crush this guy. We will take this guy out of the city. I have to remember to put someone back in there in just a moment. And we will send him over here and attack the pikeman. I think that's a Pike, yeah, it's a pikeman. Okay, so we killed an elephant. Assyria loses one elephant. Right. Now, I'm going to put a longbowman in the city because you'll notice it's paused capturing because we don't have a guy in there anymore. Now we do. He can't kill him, but he can give him a little... Oh, he did... Oh, we still didn't kill him, but he knocked the crap out of him. One, two, three. Okay, well, in that case. Onager, hi! Get some free XP. Boom. And 
he's dead. I mean, he only had one hit point. That was kind of overkill, but, you know, whatever. One pikeman for Assyria. Okay. Uh, we had some guys up north here. Looks like our, our swordsman got attacked. And he's got... Uh, I got a horseman and a... Is this a longbow or an archer? I think it's a longbow. No, it's just an archer. Okay. Well, we have an answer for that because pikemen are the counter... Spears and pikes are the counter to horsemen, mounted units in general. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Hang on. Uh, okay. So, can we get around this guy if I... Well, he's really badly tore up, though. I, I could move him up here and attack this, but I, I kind of don't want to do that. We need to, we need to get him home. Uh, well, we're gonna have the city in two years, so we need to get him here and heal him. Can this guy? Can this? No, I don't want to use a. I don't want to leave a highly decorated guy kind of vulnerable and exposed on the front line. That's uh, risky. Those are my fight finishers. I want to kind of preserve them. So I don't necessarily, yeah, I don't want to leave him in a place where he could easily be ambushed by multiple Assyrian units and iced. Okay, so... We took him down. Uh, is that enough? Yeah, okay. So we can... Catapult gets the kill on the horseman. Assyria loses one horse. Perfect. Now, I did move a relatively fresh, moderately promoted swordsman up to deal with this archer and he should mostly kill him so we'll take a whack at him okay and then what else i got i got uh this guy uh, now is that enough yeah that's enough okay so he'll take to the trees we'll come up here and turn him into a pincushion, and Assyria loses one archer. Okay, so the counterattack from the north has been dealt with. The counterattack from the east has been kind of dealt with, but not as much as I, well, we can't do anything about this guy. So uh, I would very much like to crush the life out of this archer. I'm going to see if a combination of conscript and swordsman can just take him out of the equation. Yeah, okay. We'll do it like that. So he's going to do seven, and the swordsman will finish him off. So Assyria loses a second archer. So round two of this new phase of the war, we lost nothing. Assyria lost one elephant, one pike, one horse, and two archers for a total of five for the round. And that probably put them to much weaker again so yeah we're gonna keep our boot on their throat and just not let them up for air we still have 86 orders so wait hey dude okay, the archer didn't actually disappear okay kill him please yeah there we go all right so now we're at what should i said earlier now it's true Okay, so we have 85 orders left, and we need to begin 
moving the army toward Tyria. So let's start by positioning the onagers. And I, the reason that I like to position the onagers first is because this tells me what the extent of my uh, of my onager cover fire umbrella is like once I get the onagers in place then I can say okay so given that this is the size of my covering fire umbrella now where do I want my troops so that I can protect those onagers and you know what can they hit from where I can get them so like this guy can hit both gerbil and Tyria from this hill that's amazing so he's he's totally going to go there and on limber so he's ready to fire next turn that's that that's just a key hill for us that's huge okay this guy not as good i mean well he could occupy this open ground here and technically hit both so it's not as cool as being on the hill if if he gets attacked by missile fire he doesn't have any defense against that uh, but you know I mean, that's still, he can rail on both cities. So that that's pretty good. And this guy, for some reason, did not unlimber. So we'll make sure we do that because we want these guys to be able to fire next turn. That's the whole point of moving them is so that they can provide cover fire or start beating the shit out of the city. That's why we're doing this. Okay, so this guy, if we want him to be able to hit both, then we need to move him here, right? Yeah, so that's that's where he's going to go. And this is just very efficient placement because we're going to take both of these cities. And there's no point in having to waste orders moving our onagers shifting them once we take Tyria to now we're going to start attacking gerbil okay well now we don't have to because they can already hit both so that's perfect so this is just this is just key terrain for us but uh, this is also going to mean now that we got to have you know we just got to have it right so all of this needs to be uh needs to have our troops on it and and this too because this is his waterway so we don't want him to come up from behind so we're going to basically just have to completely surround these onagers to keep them safe. And I mean, that's fine. We, we can totally do that. But it's a thing that has to occur this turn. And if that means we got to, you know, buy some orders or whatever to make that happen, then okay, that's just what we got to do. Now, this guy, this, this onager from down south, he's actually, I'm not going to worry about positioning him in such a way that he can hit both herbal and Tyria because this one's going to stick around up here to harass his navy but i don't want to put him on the coast right away because i don't want his navy to be able to snipe him so we're going to put him in the trees and i just i hit control and moved him to automatically force march him because that took more orders than his than his movement than he had in, in fatigue points and I, and I knew that but I, I, I wanted him into position so it was worth it to me now this guy let's see okay same thing we're gonna we're gonna force march him because we want him to be here. Yeah, so if he's sitting right there, he can hit herbal, he can hit Tyria. So that's what we want. And we're going to, again, I'm just going to hold down the control key and then right click to get him into position. It cost us another 100 training points, and I don't care. And so now, right now, all five of the onagers we had planned to assault these two cities are exactly where we want them. Exactly where we want them. So the rest of our orders, then, we are going to spend 
uh, protecting this shit, right? Because we're not going to move them up there and then and then just leave them with their butts hanging out the wind. We're gonna we're gonna send guys up to uh, provide some cover. And the exact form that that cover takes, uh, the the northern the northern line just north of the of the onagers is going to be infantry, because all we have to do is guard against forces coming from Tyria. I mean, from Gerbil. Our attack is going to be on Tyria, so our archers are going to be focused more on this side because they're going to be able to fire at range and they're going to be able to hit the, the city and, and that's and that's what we want so like this guy right this uh, longbow if i can click on him a laggy computer again yeah so this guy is gonna is going to come here because from here he's providing protection to the vulnerable onager and he can still take a shot at Tyria. So he's good. Uh, swordsman is going to come up right here again we're going to burn some training points to get him into position so he's adjacent to the city he can attack it he's also providing cover against the the uh, any potential attack on the onager so he's in good he's in a good place no need for training points to be burnt here he's just gonna park it uh, right beside the city now what archer or longbow whatever okay so we're gonna put him here I don't want to be on the coast yet but I do want to exert zone of control and make it I mean he could still granted he could still use his intercoastal waterway and plonk someone right here and take a whack at my at my onager and if he does okay uh, maybe move my elephant up here, which will draw some ship fire because he can get two ships that could, I don't, I don't know. But we'll, we'll think about that. Uh, we may want to put something here, even if it draws some, uh, some attention. But for now, we have one more hole to plug here. We could plug it with the cavalry, but I'd, rather not do that if I can get a, a swordsman up there and we can so we'll just do that and let's see so that gives me protection for on the north for my onagers Yes, so nobody can get to them from there. I got an archer kind of hanging out at the tip of the spear, curving around. Then I've got the swordsman, and then we extend the line to the city in this way. So he can't he can't easily get to any of my onagers except for here, here, and this hill, which we can. So those are the tiles we need to address. Okay. Well, I think I'll move my elephant to here. I don't think he can kill my elephants with his ships. So he'll just pull onager guard duty here. And if he comes up out in our faces with anything, we'll use the elephant to uh, block him. We'll put our highly decorated swordsman on the coast here. 
as a block against uh, an enemy attack that tries to sneak around us. And we're going to put, how far can you get? Probably not as far as I want. Okay, yeah, sweet. So you'll use all of your movement to come here. That'll again provide us a little extra protection um, for the onagers. And then these other two longbow that made up our defense force next to the dance floor. I've, I've been calling it the kill box, the kill floor. I, I, I think I've settled on dance floor. I like that the best. So I'm going to officially refer to it from now on as the dance floor. Uh, but these guys that, that had been part of that defense force are just going to move to the limits of their ability. Now they won't be able to, they're not in range now, but then next turn they can move and fire and they'll be in range too. So next turn, Assuming he does not come at us with a bunch of troops that I don't know about, we're going to do some serious damage to Tyria. We got five catapults in range. We've got one, two, three, four longbows that could get in range, potentially five, depending on what we want to do, uh, and two infantry to whack the city and possibly even an elephant if we want to use him that way. So, yeah, we're just going to absolutely demolish the defenses of Tyria next turn. And this is what I'm talking about, about how things, you know, uh, in the first 16 turns of the war, things move very slowly because we had to, we had to grind the army down because they were bigger and we had to get parity. And then once we got that, we broke the army. And now that we've done that, now we can just move in like we're doing on, you know, unimpeded. He can't, he's got nothing he can really do to, to prevent us from doing this. So we're just going to flood this, this zone of tangled terrain and crush Tyria. We don't even have to reposition our onagers. We can just immediately turn and crush Gerbil. And there's two more cities gone. That's two more victory points added to our coffers. So, yeah, we're, this is going to happen very quickly now. And we're going to run council again. But again, I, 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 want to, I want to make this decision every turn because if conditions change, I want to be able to adapt. I'm going to take the unhappy and, and also take that science. I, I don't really, at this point in the game, I don't think the unhappiness is going to hurt us. And actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, okay, we'll run council, but I do want to start an inquiry to get that additional uh, research. But for right now, council's fine because we need the civics to jumpstart wonder production, which, you know, we've already got the wonders ready to build. All we're waiting on is the civics. And then once that's done, then we can jump on the inquiries and start boosting. Once the wonders are actually being built, then we can switch gears to inquiries to bump up our research more but for right now the only thing stopping us from building the rest of the wonders in the game is the fact that we don't have any civics so we don't have enough civic because we could our economy fine we could buy pretty much everything else we need so yeah let's just get the civics get those started because it's going to take you know what 17 turns so the faster we get the civics, the faster we get that shit underway, and then we can just go on the other stuff. So, yeah. Council? Yeah, okay. Okay, so next turn, we're going to have 240 civics coming in, and that that's going to give us, uh, yeah, if we keep that rate for a couple of turns, we'll be able to start the remaining wonders with ease and then we're done with that. And I don't think I'm going to do anything else. I don't want to, I don't, I want to, I want to conserve these orders because we don't really know what we're going to be facing in the turns ahead. 
And, oh, no, I do want to spend two more orders though. I want to steal research. And, you know, I, we know that uh, Babylon has better tech and we could probably get more from stealing research from them. But if they catch us, I, yeah, I don't want to, I don't know that I want to take that. I don't, I don't want to take that chance. And as long as these guys are showing as learned, we can still get, you know, decent points from them. Because uh, we do not want to fight. We're already fighting Assyria. Well, technically fighting Assyria. So I don't know that we want to have a... Oh, this is nice. Okay, good. I feel better about this then. Uh, I do want to spend points to... Uh, finish healing these guys because we may need them. Well, we're going to need them, but I mean, we may need them like sooner than I'd prefer. And I want them ready to fight if we do. But otherwise, you know, I think we're in pretty good shape. Hey, give me this. Okay. Good. So those guys are healed up ready to go we got to promote the longbow but i mean otherwise they're they're ready and we had a good turn i'm going to get my sheet ready for round three okay so yeah the shooting will start in earnest on Tyria next turn Let's see. And we'll be able to start. No, we won't. We won't be able to start another wonder. We will be 20 civics shy. So two turns from now, we'll start another, another wonder. And I probably want to go ahead and start the one that takes food. I don't remember which one it was, but one of them took food. So let's go ahead and do that one because that's going to be the most expensive thing because we don't have any food. So we're going to have to sell uh, metal and, and wood to make that a thing. And then, but that's done. So we do that once and we're done. And that one is started. You know what? Actually, no. Because nobody, the, the reason the market price is so high is because nobody else has food either, which means they're not going to be building it. So yeah, let's do the other ones first then because. It, we can we can rely on the fact that there's a worldwide food shortage to pretty well guarantee that nobody is going to build whatever one that was that requires food so we can afford to wait on that one and then when we get the resources together we just sell what we got to sell we buy the food and we start that too there's less of a chance i think of that one getting snaked out from under us than the others that don't require the food so yeah 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 that's the that's the right answer I am buzzing from coffee, by the way. I, you can probably tell because I'm kind of, I feel like I'm talking faster than usual because, yeah, I've, I've, I'm excited about uh, winning this game and I've hopped up on caffeine. And so, yeah, I'm like, I'm ready to go. I'm going a thousand miles an hour in my head. What is he going to do? I kind of feel like he's going to use that elephant against my you know, the force I just moved into the tangles, but but maybe not. I mean, he didn't have anything to support it with, so eh, it would be just pure suicide to run the elephant. Oh, okay, you gonna you gonna attack with the uh, with the conscript? Wow, that wasn't much of an attack. And we've got a pike right there. So if he brings the elephant out of the city and it looks like he's gonna, then the elephant is just dead. Okay, so he, he knocked my archer for, or my longbow for a loop, but didn't kill it. So he's dead. And here comes his navy, of course. Now, I wonder, I don't know, how much damage can a cataphract do if he parks a unit, like, 
yeah, like right there. Could I could I set my cataphract down? I'm in I'm in my own territory. I can whack him. How much would that do? I I don't know. We will have to investigate. Okay, so he did nominal damage to the elephant. They got a what? They got another archer there. He's bringing more archers to to ding my swordsman. So we'll pull. And I forgot to move that guy. We need to pull him back behind the line to heal him. Probably like right here. We'll pull him back to heal him because they may try to swing around and threaten the onager. We don't want that. So that way, after he heals up, he can go. Uh, Demolish the enemy archers. Okay, so that longbow kind of got the crap beat out of him a little bit. Uh, yeah, sickness coming through the ranks of our. Uh, so Persia gives us 10 civics, we give up 23 wood. Or we get two orders and they get some stone. We got 300 stone a turn. Hell yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So that we're, we're, we're in good shape with there. Let's immediately send another trade mission. I don't, I don't want to lose track of that. I don't want that to become, uh, we don't want to let the relationship decay at all. So Persia, another trade mission. And can I influence this guy with my with my leader? I mean, just to just to. No. Uh, looks like he's already. Oh, I don't want to spend. Well, crap. Okay, so we can't do. A, no, we couldn't do a wonder anyway. That's uh, going to cost us two hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm not doing it. All right. Uh, no, we're not going to do a new. A new general, but let's let's see. Can we rescue this longbow? Probably. So let's. Oh, yeah, okay. So let's move here. We'll hit him. So we didn't lose. Now, he attacked nine times, but we didn't lose anything on round three. Keep up with my record keeping. Us, we lost nothing. Assyria. Uh, okay. So we'll bring this guy forward and he'll get the kill shot on the elephant. So Syria loses one elephant. But now that that's done, that, uh, that clears out zone of control. So we should be able to move this guy. Uh, uh, we can't quite. Okay, can we? Dude. Okay, so we want this guy. Yes, so he can go here and heal. Laggy computer, super, super 
laggy computer. Yes, I know he must be in friendly territory. I'm trying to get him to friendly territory. Please let me move my damaged longbow. Thank you. All right. I want to finish healing this guy. Next turn, the city flips. That's going to be so huge. No, I don't want him to fortify. I want him to heal. Heal. Doggone it. <laughs> I'm getting frustrated because my computer is so laggy. Please let me select this dude. Please let me heal this dude. I shall pray to the gods of the CPU. Let this be a thing that happens. Thank you. All right. Now we need, before I get mired in the, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we're attacking Tyria. We're finally, it's happening, blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> before all that happens, let me move these guys that keep getting shot at. If, if it will allow me to to do that maybe we'll see okay so you can come here just behind the line and heal right please let me heal hello all right progress You guys Oh, you weren't being threatened though, were you? No. And you're gonna be in our territory. Okay, so you're fine. Over here we are getting threatened. We're getting shot at. And I don't much like it. We got a couple of guys who need promotions, so let's attend to that I'll promote you to focus hello all right I'll promote you to focus and here's here's the reason I like well I, I started my love affair with the focus promotion when I was when Assyria became my favorite Civ because they automatically start with the focus one promotion all their units do which means they can get to focus three quickly and easily, right? So that just gives them a, a better chance of critical of scoring a critical hit, which does double damage. And you know, having a unit that has a more better chance of critical hitting that's that's neat, but it's not really all that compelling. But that's not really the power because you can't really plan for that, right? If I have one guy that has a 10% higher chance of getting a critical hit, yay, go me. Sometimes that might be useful, but that's not something I can build a strategy around, really. Okay, but if I have an army of 40 or 50 units, and they've all got focus 3, and they've all got a 30% higher chance of getting a critical and scoring double damage, well, statistically, I freaking know I'm going to get 2 or 3 critical hits every every turn period i'm just gonna that's just gonna be a thing okay well now that i can plan around so i might not know which unit will get the critical but i know i'm going to be inflicting relatively more pain and on a reliable basis so yeah that's that's the value of focus really not not that oh yay my one unit can you know critical hit slightly more often that so that doesn't matter 
what matters is when you if you if you use focus embrace it give everybody you can focus because that's that's really where its power comes from all right teria goodbye Maybe this siege might take a long time because my computer is like, no, I don't want to do anything for you. Eh, okay, yeah, I don't, I don't care about that. I would like to fire on the city. I would like to shoot them, pew pew, bang bang. Not, yeah, just. Cooperate with me, computer. All right, uh, this will do splash damage onto yon conscript. Okay, so Terry is getting the crap knocked out of it. I think we'll have it next turn. No, we can't. We we can't physically pour enough fire onto the city to take it this turn. But by God, we'll get it by next. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that was just with the onager fire. That's before we even hit it with the longbows and then the pikemen and the swordsmen. Yeah, he's done. Tyria is toast. These defenses are already in the yellow. And we aren't even close to being done yet. Okay, and this guy should do, yeah, so the swordsman's going to hit the city, and it's going to do enough splash damage to actually kill the conscript, so Assyria loses one conscript. Okay. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a big hit. He, he not going to recover from that. So we'll have Tyria next turn and probably have enough assets left over to start beating on Gerbil. Now let's come over here. Now let's come over here with the uh, with the pikemen first. Come on, pikemen. Oh, pikemen is already attacked. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, I know what we'll do. We will lead then with our highly decorated swordsman who will come right here. Because he's already got five promotions, so we don't want him to get the kill shot because he can't really, any additional experience he earns is not going to do anything for him. On the other hand, this guy can gain the benefit of getting the kill shot because he still has promotions he can, he can take. So we'll move him in, he'll get the kill shot, and then he'll get the experience for that. And that will uh, 
So Assyria loses an archer. One. Oh, that's a longbow. Okay. Assyria loses a longbow. All right. Well, that's done. So that was another three units crushed. And I think that's all we want to do in the tangles. We could potentially, oh, we got, we got two, no, we got one unit we could move, the, the conscript. I don't think we're going to do anything with him, so that's fine. This guy, though, this uh, swordsman. Yeah, we need to pull back because we're not ready to attack the city. So, and we want him behind what will be friendly territory and behind our lines so we can heal him next turn. And then conscript will go here. Okay. And I think that all of our cities we have four we have four cities that uh, need production uh, unless there is a compelling reason not to I think we will set them all to council for this turn because next turn we're going to build another we're going to start another uh, wonder so yeah, let's just bulk up on our training, bulk up on our civics, and we don't need any more conscripts right now, so we're not going to do that. So we'll go council, and we don't need another swordsman right now. Council, and this is going to do very good things to our top line resources including the money we we can't seem to keep a dollar council we got a farm special we could work on here so we'll probably do that next turn because we need the food we're we're running a deficit and who's our who's our last city here uh, Heraclea, and he'll just do a council as well. Yep, okay, so that's going to give us. So we will have the civics to do to start another wonder next turn, and then if we keep this pace, we'll be able to start a third wonder the turn following. So yeah, and, then, and that's, I think, what we need to keep doing until we get the queue emptied so there's no more wonders we can build. Then we can turn our attention to other stuff. But right now, wonders for victory points, that's the way. So, and I do not believe I want to spend any more orders. I think we have everybody. Oh, no, no, no. I do. I kind of want to see, like, if I move uh, Cataphract down here, just what kind of damage could we do to this guy? We could do four. That's not as impressive as I was, as I was hoping. But you know what? We may, I think we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, let's do it anyway. Right? Okay, so let's wail on this guy. Ah, but okay, so this may be, I, I, may, I may have yet more stuff to do then. So let's wail on this guy. Because if I can kill another ship, what is this? Is this a, this is a bireme. So this is not, should not be a huge challenge, right? 
we ought to be able to kill this guy fairly easily, I, I would think. Right, so can, can I, like if I take this guy and put him here, okay, and yeah, Let's, I, I think I kind of want to just keep pouring fire on him until he dies, because uh, we need to start grinding his navy down anyway. So, yeah, let's do that. And I got another archer I could bring down and put him like here. Okay. Will that be enough or will I need to bring the elephant from Thebes? Because I totally don't mind dropping the elephant on the coast and getting a kill shot on a Byrene with an elephant. That would be hilarious. Come on, dude. All right. So we got that. Yeah, he'll have like one hit point left. So the elephant will come down from Thebes and will score the kill. <laughs> Go elephant. Okay. Oh, and I realized that that was not the horseman is what who did the attack not the cataphract so okay well that probably makes more sense than four damage seemed a little bit light for a cataphract but you know i've never actually used one to attack a ship before so i don't really know all right so assyria loses one by ream so for round three we lost nothing assyria lost one elephant one conscript one longbow and one byreme and they are about to lose the city of tyria next turn because they can't do anything to prevent that so i'm going to prepare i'm going to prep for round four and next turn is going to be huge because the city of tushba is going to flip and we're going to see our score increase. Okay, we're done. Let's see. And while uh, the turn is processing, I'm going to go down and get some more coffee. So things are going to go quiet for a minute, but I will be right back. I'm just desperately in need of yet more caffeine so I can keep rambling. I'll be right back.
Okay, look at me. I'm back with coffee, and Assyria is still not even done taking their turn. So I didn't miss much. Let's see. What are these guys going to do? They have a little force assembling in Gozen. I mean, it's not big enough to really worry about right now, but... It is something to keep an eye on. Good, good. He's bringing more navy up. Well, I mean, that's, you know, real nickel and dime us on the coast. But, <laughs> uh, of course, I mean, I guess at this point, that's really like all the military he's got left. I mean, to speak of. So, oh. I have, if you hear rumbling, I have Mr. Oreo is uh, riding shotgun for this segment of the video. So if you hear any rumbling sounds, that's him with his very strong per motor. Oh, absolutely. And let's do we, how much stone do you want? Uh, 55 stone, really? Okay, hell yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we can deal with them ourselves. We don't need anyone holding a favor over our heads. Yeah, okay. Hey, yes. Uh, so, you know, I, I was originally going to say let's take that that vandal city or that vandal tribal site and like add that to our collection uh, we're not going to need it we're not going to have time so sure let's uh yeah we'll make peace we'll seal it with a wedding and done deal all right. And let's see. How are the families? Everybody's still tickled. Okay, well, we'll do Lysander. He's young. He'll be in the, hopefully in the position for a good long while. Hey, give Tushpa to one of our families. Well, everybody has three. We're going to give it to the alchemists because they are the, I mean, they're all pleased, but they're the lowest score. So we'll go ahead and just give them our first conquest. I don't have any particular reason beyond that for, hey, Oreo, knock it off, buddy. He's trying to push the headphones off my head. All right, so this year, before we do anything else, we have to do some serious uh, healing. We got a lot of banged up troops. We were waiting for the city of Tushba to flip. It has now done so. So this is now friendly territory, which means all the guys in it 
can get some well-deserved heals and R&R. &R. Okay. All of you guys take a heal. Hello. Yeah, all of you guys take a heal. Okay, get the army back in fighting shape, and then we will prepare to move on to uh, Tushan, and I, I think we probably have enough orders since we've got some banks now. I think we probably have enough orders to do both. Uh, continue the Teria and uh, gerbil attack and position for Tushan. So in addition to the healing, I'm going to start by moving uh, my onagers north because we're going to need them. And I, I don't think that I will need any onagers to help defend Tushpa from a possible counterattack. Uh, I think that we we have the defense well in hand. So one, two, three. Well, we we've got four catapults. So I, yeah, okay. I'll leave I'll leave one catapult behind. I'll just actually sit him in the city. Four catapults ought to do it, and I'm planning on leaving one up there when we when we conquer it to guard the pass. So yeah, and then we'll bring the other three back, and that'll still give us four because we're going to leave one down here, and then we can move on to Gozen from from there. So yeah, I think we'll be in good shape. It, from experience, it usually take about three repairs to. Uh, get the damage to the walls fixed up. So, yeah, we'll do that. No, should just need three. Do we have any governor candidates we can put into this new... Oh, we do. The, 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 the vandals lady that we just married. Nice. Well, we'll give her a good cushy job. That boosts our research a little bit more. Okay. So, and what I wanted to see, what is Tushba's per turn culture? Yeah, they're getting 12, 12 and a half turns. So we got a point for, you know, actually the city flipping to us. And in eight years, we'll get another point when it gains a cultural level. So perfect. That's perfect. Okay, so we're beginning to close the gap now. Babylon is continuing to uh, research those future texts. So I'm sure if we look at their score, that is exactly, uh, yeah, so they now got, they've got six future texts. That's six of their point, or yeah, six of their points have come from uh, researching future texts. Now we're, you know, two turns away from having ours, so that'll be big. Uh, 
we're going to keep running councils because we're we're going to keep doing that until we uh, get and I, I must have spent some civics because we still don't have enough to do a dang uh, wonder so we'll have to we'll have to wait but we got more coming so council council Council. Yeah, just council everywhere because we. I got to be more careful about how I spend those civics. We could have started a wonder this turn, and now we're going to be delayed. That's all right. We'll, we'll make it happen. Council. Okay, so that's that's done. We're, and we're going to have, yeah, we're generating 300 civics. So we're going to have enough for sure next turn to do. And if we keep that pace, we'll have, we can just do a wonder every turn, assuming the rest of our economy can support that, which I, I actually think we, we can. Okay, so let's, first of all, first thing let's crush the life out of Tyria I do not wish you to even be a thing anymore yeah you're dead hey no, don't switch places with him. What? Why would you do that? Just attack. Just attack. That's all you gotta do. Attack him. That knocks down the defenses. And... Tyria has been captured. Oh. Uh, yeah, let's get the free tech. It could, it could be that we get... Okay, so we got winless. Great. Cool. Well, we'll do something with that, I'm sure. Now, this guy is not, what is he? Is he a, he's another Byrene. Yeah, you're not going to be allowed to live. Assyria, we lost nothing. Assyria, one, Byrene. Okay. I wonder, can I? Yeah, let me see what the cataphract. If if I brought the cataphract down here, uh, see it only shows him doing four points of damage as well. So I guess it doesn't really matter what kind of unit I use. It's still just going to do like a base. Just some sort of base damage, which is okay. I mean, that's fine. Uh, this guy, we're gonna do four. What is this? This is another Byrene. Okay, well, let's. I'm going to keep pouring fire on this thing till he dies. I don't care if it takes a cut another couple of longbows or what. We're not, we're not letting him live. Yeah, okay. So you can come over here and get the kill shot. Assyria loses two by this turn. All right. Now, these guys, 
still have not. So we have one catapult that has not fired yet. I'm actually going to fire on the city though, because uh, normally I, I say, you know, guys, as long as there's as long as there's an army in the field, you want to focus on the army first. This is not really army in the field. I'm talking about shit that can threaten my uh, my land force, and these guys really can't. So I don't care if they're here and, and threatening. I'm going to take the city, and if these guys want to hang around and try to take it back, then yeah, we'll focus fire on them and try them into the dirt. But for right now, I'm perfectly content to let them just keep, you know, taking the occasional pot shot and whatever. And we will continue to just progressively take more of his cities, which will pull his teeth. He won't actually be able to do anything to us when he starts losing enough production centers that, you know, it begins to seriously hurt his ability to uh, produce reinforcements, which is, you know, kind of what's happening right this second. Okay. So most of our attack power went to capturing Tyria. We had some leftover units that we deployed against uh, the Siege of Gerbil, and we knocked him to about half with just our leftovers. So I would call that a, a good day. Uh, this guy, we are pulling back. Uh, okay, we can't quite. We can't quite get, oh, we can get in. This is, this is our border. Yeah, okay, fine. Come here and, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Come here and heal. Perfect. And you can heal. Maybe if it will let me select you, you can heal. Yes. Okay, so we got that. We've captured a second city and see how much more quickly, right? So the first city took a very long time to do and Tyria just basically folded like a cheap suit. So, and same thing, this is also not going to be, I would be very surprised if this lasted beyond next year. We should have gerbil next year and then we'll be, then we'll be in that unenviable position of having to grind his navy down with mostly land units but we'll we'll worry about that later okay so uh everybody's healing troops are getting ready to move out we're gonna move a uh yeah we have a pikeman up here so that down here so that's good we're gonna move some more infantry and archers up this way. And catapult has already moved. That should be more than enough strength to protect Tushba while the army is gone. Uh, I'm going to move my, my main battle tank up. So if we encounter anything even remotely scary, main battle tank is just going to crush it. Okay, and I want to leave my longbow uh, behind a screen of stout. Well, we got one guy up there, but yeah, whatever. Okay, so I think that is pretty well. I mean, we're we're clearly moving forces organizing to attack Tushan. He can clearly see that and I, I don't actually I don't honestly care that he can see that because what's he going to do? Nothing. He is going to do nothing of note. Uh, I will move another conscript up. 
think that's really all we want to do because we want to we want to save everything we can for uh wonder building so we're done we're done i think yeah because we got a trade mission out we got steel research out we're getting okay yeah we're done done And capturing Tyria knocked Assyria out of first place. They lost the points for that city, so they dropped below Babylon. And in a few more years, we will uh, get them added to our total. Of course, by that point, we'll also have Herbal captured and be well on our way if we haven't already captured uh, Tushan. So that will be another three victory points for Team Greece. So we're rapidly, rapidly moving up the the ladder. Uh, next, you know, next couple of turns, we will it'll flip and we'll be in second place behind Babylon with the Syria trailing, and then the race is on. We just we catch Babylon and we win. So that's the plan. That's the plan. And I think after this mission completes where we're stealing tech from Assyria, I think next turn, next time, we will do a steal tech from Babylon. If they catch us, you know, okay, we'll send them a trade mission or uh, kiss kiss make up whatever and, and but we're on pretty good terms with them so i think that even if we get caught we can afford to take the hit and it'll give us you know should give us a pretty generous dose of uh training of uh research points so yeah let's just do that oh will you here I've been talking and I now end my oh I can't end my turn because there's an event. Okay. So Oh yeah, give me another long bow. Yeah. Okay, now end turn. Let's go. I'll prep my sheet for round five. So Assyria lost two bioreams that turn. That was it. We didn't lose anything. Round five. Us. And ass. That's my abbreviations on the, the sheet. Us for our losses and ass for Assyrian losses. So we're at peace with everyone in the world except Assyria, who we are uh, at this point absolutely dominating on the battlefield. Oh, here you come. Let's see. What are you going to do? Okay, he's probably going to kill that uh, conscript. He can have him if he wants him. If he, Yeah, okay, there it is. So we're going to lose a conscript. One conscript, but that was a catastrophically bad idea, right? Because to 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 kill that conscript, he had to expose a longbow and two pikes. So he killed a conscript. Yay, go him! And now he's going to lose four, five. He's going to lose a bunch of guys. Uh, okay, crossbowman in the capital. Well, that's not nice. All right, so we have a soldier. Uh, he's a tactician. Good, we could use the general. We're going to... Yeah, I think we're just going to do economic reform. We're just going to keep getting the victory points. Is she going to study politics? That, that's my go-to choice. Don't need 
chance we can appoint a chancellor and still have enough points to yeah it's only going to cost us a hundred so we can do that and still have enough points to start that wonder that we wanted oh shit but we can't okay so no no governor no none of that none of that we're not we're not doing that Spymaster gets a lot of biz, a bonus out of wisdom, so yeah, we'll do that. Okay, before we do anything else, wonder. I know we got some stuff to deal with, and we will, but wonder. So, uh, this guy, because Heraclea is a, is a legendary city we're gonna so the circus maximus is the one that requires the food uh both of these require the same amount of stone so yeah i don't know that it matters then uh that's going to give us the training per year and this is going to give us civics per year. So actually we want this one first because civics is what is going to uh, allow us to build the next wonder. So yeah, we want to come over here. We want to build the Sophia. We'll just do that. And I don't even care how long it takes. It doesn't really matter to me because it's actually 14 years, so that's cool. We don't have the civics to do another one, but we have the resources at the ready. So next turn, we can start the, the one that we didn't do, Disco. Okay, so this guy, I, I would love to deal with this right this second, and we're just not going to be able to because we have to come down and deal with this crossbow. So first and foremost we're, and these guys aren't going to do any significant damage to him so it's going to be up to the swordsman and if I can get something else here no don't move into the city just hit him Seriously, just hit him from right there. Yes, please. Now, what kind of damage? Okay, so he's going to knock the crap out of... He won't kill anybody, but he will knock the crap out of whoever he... Uh, and we'll be able to kill him next turn. But yeah, that's not nice. That's not nice at all. Okay, um, so, yeah, I would love to spend another round healing up my guys and just kind of being, you know, normal for a turn, but we're not going to be able to do that. Before we do anything over there, though, let, let's, let's go. So he pulled his navy away. He decided he didn't want to play that game. I don't really blame him. I mean, that was not a game he was going to win anyway. But I'm sure he'll be back. Probably next turn. So let's capture Gerbil. Like right now. We'll just do this. Tired of being behind in points. We're going to... We're going to kick our conquest into overdrive and we're just going to make this we're just going to make this happen because we yeah we're going to win this game that was not even not even a question we're, we're gonna make it happen all right and you can come up what are you what are or your longbow. Okay. Well, what do we have? K 
Can you get the kill shot? Yes, you can. So Herbal has fallen. And a series loses one longbow. All right, that's our third city capture. So in terms of our initial, the initial objectives that we set for ourselves were three out of four, right? We captured all the cities and both the cities in the Tangles. We've captured Tushba and we have an army in route to take to Shan. So all that is good. Now over here, I'm going to bring my pikemen to the flanks. And I'm going to do that because they both get uh, the pass through damage. So he'll do a lot of damage to this guy and a little bit up here and vice versa. So we maximized our damagey goodness by doing that. Same thing here. I'm going to bring swordsmen up right in front of him because when I attack this guy, He's going to do most of the, he's going to get most of the damage, but this guy is still going to get some splash and vice versa. So like when I come up here and I attack this guy, oh no, actually is that, yeah, so he's going to, he's going to, no, uh, I need to go from the other way, right? So I need to move him like around here and we can do that. And then I attack this guy, he's going to take most of the damage. He's going to take the splash, but they both die because by that point we've done enough damage that that's a thing. So he loses two pikemen. Right. That's what I, that's what I wanted. Okay. <clears throat> damage to the city will be repaired uh next turn so we can what are you you are a, a longbow perfect you are a dead longbow no now we're just gonna have to stand in the open no, no, that's okay all right so we'll come here this guy will come out we're gonna need one more but I, I don't have one more. Okay. Then, then we're going to need this guy. Oh, we did. Okay, good. So he lost one more longbow. So this round we have lost one conscript and Assyria has lost two longbow, two pike, and another city. Go us. Okay. So we're doing this. Uh, we're moving catapult. You know what? I don't even think I want to move catapult into the city. Why well, don't I just, yeah. I mean, we've only got the one catapult. It's not like this is going to, I mean, we're not going to be able to seriously threaten goes in quickly with just one catapult. On the other hand, you know, uh, we could at least start beating on the city a little bit and you know he has to he can't rush things from the city he has to repair or it's going to take you know, increasing discontent and i mean we do have guys around here so if he's going to keep taking pot shots at us yeah screw it let's just go ahead and mess with it but in the meanwhile um how far can my Okay, so they can get all the way up to here. How far can you get? So you could actually get into a firing position right now. Okay, well then let's fire on Tushan this turn. I don't even care. It's not going to be enough damage to, to matter, and, and that's fine. We're going to hit Tushan for a little bit of damage. And this is really rough to rank. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to find a worker and I need to build some roads because we need to road connect our new cities way connect them to our empire. Yeah. Yeah, because this is not currently connected at all. So we need to do that. That'll be a thing. 
Okay, so we'll get a second long bow up here. And we'll just start plinking. It's not enough damage to really amount to anything. But that's not the point. The point is we're getting hits in. We're beginning to get hits in. Can we come over here and just wreck you with this guy? I mean, we're not going to kill you, but can we just come over and hurt you really bad? Yeah, screw you, dude. Screw you. And in fact, we'll send this we'll send this pikeman over here in support and anything else that happens to be over there, you guys just handle it. All right, so you're just out of range, and that's okay. Actually, you know what? No, uh, I've got the training points, so yeah. Can we? Sure. Let's move you the extra tile. Let's go ahead and unlimber you. Same thing here. Let's get you to right here and we'll limber you yeah I just want to get this done you know we just want to be done with this so can we move you can you hit from here yes so let's move you up here and unlimber you and then you can force march to here and on lumber. So next turn, we're ready to go. We're ready to fire. Okay. Um, Rhodes, do we have a, we have a worker? He's right here. So this is an urban tile, so we can step out. All we need is a two tile road to connect these urbans, and he's part of the trade network. Let's do it. All right. Do we have another worker in the area that could go ahead and make that a thing this turn? We do. So let's do it. Yeah. Build me a road. What did you do? No. No. Build me a road. There it is. Okay. And now he's connected. All right. So Tushpa is connected. But this is shit terrain that we're slogging through. And this tells me that we need it. Oh, but okay. So we got this river. And he's built a road down to the river. So as soon as we... I just didn't use the road, that's all. But yeah, as soon as we take Tushan, it's connected. So that's good. Okay. So we don't have to worry about anything like that. Uh, okay, what else? We need to build. Now, we already started the wonder. Okay. And it looks like we're going to have just enough uh, civics to do another wonder next year. So what is that going to do to our points, right? We started to wonder, oh wait, I'll close this. So we started to wonder this year, that's two points. That's going to put us to 40. We captured two cities that I don't think I, yeah, okay, we haven't, kept, so this is going to be another two points. That's 42. That ties us with uh, Babylon. These cities will probably get their culture bump fairly fast, which will be another two points. That puts us at 44. We have a wonder coming that will start next turn. That'll put us at 46. And then we'll have the Circus Maximus, which will put us at 48. Uh, this will put us at 49, then 50 when it gets its cultural bump. So that that's, and this will be 51, 52. And then it's got the, it's the Holy City. So That'll be 54. So when we capture Gozen, we'll have 
we'll, we'll have enough stuff in the works to get us to 54 points and by that time we'll have this which will make it 55 so in the extremely near future we're going to be like two points shy of a victory that's yeah so we capture any two cities or we capture this city right here oh we capture the capital and it's got the the great lighthouse and we're done so we capture tushan gozen and Aser, and and we're done we, we win that's all we need and we could leave a small garrison in gerbil to guard against any potential counterattacks from niblet We'll do the same thing here. We'll capture goes and leave a couple of guys behind so these guys can form a, a defensive line on the coast. The rest of the army then pushes onto Assyria or onto Asser, and we're done. That, that's all we need to do. Okay. Okay. We got it. Uh, he's getting old, but we're getting there. Everybody's going to run council again for at least one more year because we still got wonders in the hopper that we want to to build. So until we get those built, we're just going to continue running councils to get the 100% bonus on civics training points and money because we're spending the civics just as fast as we can get them in the door okay uh, this is done all right so we'll be again we're making just north of 300 and it takes 300 to start the next wonder. So we have automatically got enough civics to do that, provided we don't spend any on anything else. And we'll just make sure we don't for the next two turns, because we've got to get uh, we've got to get these wonders started, because they take you know quite a long time to complete. All right, so uh, for round five, final count, we lost a conscript, Assyria lost two longbow and two pike and another city. We're ending the turn and I'm gearing up for round six. Now taking the first Assyrian city took us 16 years. We've already conquered two more in six in this in this segment of the game. So that's how much faster things are going now that his, yeah, you know, the bulk of his army is uh, basically sitting in graveyards. Okay. That doesn't really matter which unit the uh, rebel crossbowman hits. He can't kill any of them, and as long as no more spawn, the next three attacks we make on him, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to get rid of him. So it's fine. Okay, so we got a little fighting to do outside of Gozen. And this is not even a serious, I mean, we're, okay, he knocked the crap out of the guy, the swordsman. Ouch. That's one of our highly decorated dudes, so we don't really, yeah, we may, lose, we're going to, no, that's not an attacker. I think he's going to survive with one hit point, <laughs> but he survived. Yeah, okay, a new power rises and we don't even care. Why don't we care? We don't care because Rome still, I'm sure, has, yeah, they're like not even a thing. And these guys, I mean, they're weaker militarily. They have better tech, but 
we're researching the future tech. So what do we care? They're not even a thing again. Uh, see Babylon once. Uh, no, we're going to get our wife endeared to us. We're not doing that. Okay. We want the order. Give me the, give me the order. Hell yeah. Okay. So he knocked the crap out of the swordsman, which I mean, that's fine. That was probably the best attack he could have made. I mean, of the options available, that was the right call. So yeah, he knocked the crap out of our swordsman, but he's still going to die. So that's done. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, wonders. We want to build a wonder. We want to build the one that doesn't cost food. So the Pantheon. I want to build a Pantheon. Where can we build it? Uh, it requires... So it can just be built wherever. So we're just going to build it like here. I don't... At this point, it doesn't... As long as it gets built, it doesn't really matter. It's... We're just... Yeah. But the game's not going to last long enough for it to be a thing. So, okay. Pantheon has begun. The only other wonder out there is the Circus Maximus, and it will require that we spend some money and resources to buy. Okay, we're, we are going to need to save a little bit to buy to, for the stone, but then we'll just buy the food we need and we'll be done. So, yeah. Okay, so that's that's done. We'll put everybody to running council again because same idea we're going to keep doing that till we start the circus maximus that's the plan and that'll give us plenty of training points and civics and all that so yeah All right. So that's done. Now, we currently have two sieges in progress, right? Because we kind of sort of laying siege to Gozen, and we've moved a bunch of guys up here and in response he has a catapult here and that's going to be nasty but you know i'm not going to work about it uh we gain an officer in tushba or we get now we're just going to gain the officer okay so we're going to just keep wailing on the city until it disintegrates Now, one thing that I do want to do, though, I want to spread my guys out because his catapult is unlimbered and it will do splash damage. So we don't want to, as much as possible, wait, this guy is not even, what? He's not even in a, in a oh man, okay. Well, in that case, so we'll move this guy around here. I thought I had all my guys unlimbered. Apparently, I do not. So this guy's just going to come here. This guy's going to step over here. And hell, no. Hello, this guy. He's going to step over here. And hell whack at the city okay so we didn't really i mean we've started to do some damage here and he's going to get some shot off and that's going to suck uh but you know i mean I, we're we're doing okay now i still i don't know where the hell that archer went probably back into roman territory but i i don't know okay how far can you get uh okay well then you just stay put 
So we'll have to scout the old fashioned way. Let's move our. Oh, hey, we found him. And we found a whole bunch of other guys besides. Now, what are you, your longbow? Okay, well, Mr. Longbow, uh, I am going to get some guys up there to kill you, even if I have to force march it. Yes, we're going to put our pikemen right there and crush you. So, we lost nothing. And Assyria has lost one longbow, but we are at risk of losing somebody, as I remember. He damn near killed my swordsman. So we're going to bring this pikeman up. Force March. Well, this is a cataphract. Is that what I'm? Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah. So that's going to take two of our. Uh, that's going to take two of our pikemen to kill. So he lost one cataphract. Okay. And then this pikeman will, uh, this pikeman right here, will come up here to do the shock damage, right? Shock damage onto the city. And then the swordsman. will come over here, hit the pikeman, which will do splash damage onto the city. And then when I fire, is the, is the catapult splash damage going to be enough to kill this guy? Then, or probably not, right? Probably not. No, it's just going to do a single point. So... What we'll do is we'll move this guy up. We'll get the kill shot on the pikeman. So he lost one pike. And that frees up zone of control so I can rescue my swordsman. Put him back in the city. And we heal him. Then, oh, we're not done. I'm going to come over here and whack this longbow with my swordsman. And I think, can we get all the way around there? No, oh, he's already attacked, so no, we can't. Oh, this guy. No, he's going to heal. Okay, I want him to get ready for the next... And this guy's heal didn't process because my computer's lagging. So do that. This guy is gonna heal. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Well, I could force march you over here, could I not? What would you do? But that would kill him. Do I have? Do I have another longbow? If I have a longbow anywhere that I could force march, I could make that work. I do. I do have a longbow. Okay. So let's do it like this, right? Let's put the longbow. Let's put the longbow right there. And we'll whack him with that. And then, where's that other swordsman? Right here. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah. I don't even care. But it's going to take a lot of orders to do that. Uh, so he lost another longbow. <laughs> okay. So um, we're going to do another uh, steel research mission. Are we not? This time we're going to steal from Babylon, and we're going to do that because we're generating 300 civics, so we're still going to be able to build a wonder. So we're going to get that cooking, but we're not going to do a trade mission because we don't have the points for that anymore. Okay, uh, so that's done. We can't heal here. We'd have to move troops back. We don't want to do that. Uh, we can fire our onager into the city. Okay, so now Gozen is in pretty bad shape, and uh, it depends on what he does. It'll probably take two more turns. Although, if we if we put everything we have available, we may emphasis on may be able to take it next turn it would be close it would be a monumental effort but we could conceivably oh yeah yeah okay we could because i could bring these guys up right because we're done in gerbil so i could bring these guys up and we can start plinking on it right now oh yeah okay so there he we're gonna have goes in like next turn Okay, and what about, and we've already done everything that we were going to do up here, have we not? Yeah, so we don't need, I, I don't know that it's true that we're not, we may need these guys after all. Okay, but I don't want to see if I move him here, and he could target this and then hit all of my onagers with splash. So I think if I need any more infantry, I'm just going to have to move them up with uh, force marches. So I'll move them to like here so that they're out of range, but I could still, they're close enough that I could, that I could get them next to the city center if I need them to, to be there. So, yeah. And we have a peace treaty with Rome, so I can actually get into his borders and go get these guys if we want to do that next turn. And I think I kind of, I think I kind of probably do, because I don't, I don't want this, I don't want them to be nickeling and diming me to death. So, uh, Tushan probably. Two, maybe three, probably three turns from Tushan because he's got, yeah, three turns. Okay. He's got significant defenses in Tushan. Uh, we're really, we burn some orders up this go. So we're just going to, we're probably going to spend them all. But, okay. So these guys are fine where they are. These guys are going to move forward and promote. He's going to move to the coast and promote. I mean, he's only 10 points away. This guy Gonna move up here and get his eagle eye promotion. Okay. Yeah, so we'll we'll have uh, we'll have goes in next turn for sure. Okay. Uh, we're done. Next turn we start the no, two turns from now because we got to build up. We got to build up stone to uh, get the circus maximus. We can. We'll just buy the food with uh, selling 
metal and wood. Okay, but we need a stone. We'll, we'll wait until we, so we'll keep running councils until we get the, oh, wait a minute now. No, I think we're just going to keep running councils to the end of the game because when we cap out at 2000 civics, I think all those extra civics convert to research anyway. Like at 20 to 1. This is from memory, but yeah, once you cap out at civics at 2000, the excess it just becomes research. So I don't I don't think we need to do anything except so I'm just going to set from from here I'm just going to set our cities to running council because I don't we don't need any more troops. And if we did, we'll pull a selected city. Well, actually, okay. We'll let one city, uh, Syracuse, build swordsmen like forever. Uh, no. No. Yeah. No. May he lead his people to ruin. It's kind of an ass hat thing to say, but I like it. Okay. She becomes educated. Yes, prepare guards, because God only knows. We're not, we're not doing that. Okay, Delver for 15 stone, we'll take it. Okay, so we got the, can we, how close are we? So like if, if I were to, I just, what would it take? It would take 22 Take 23,000 gold. I don't, I don't even, I don't even think we could do that, but let's just, I just want to see. Yeah, not even close. Not even close. We could, we could sell everything we have and we would, we would barely be half. Well, actually, I mean, we're not, oh, wait, wait. Okay, are we there? Are we there? Did we do this? Did we do this? <laughs> we, we cratered our economy, but we did it. Okay, so the Circus Maximus is a thing. It's on the way. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, that's the rest of the wonders out of the way. We'll have, that, we'll have that in 16 and 16 years. So I think I'm just, we got eight cities that are queued up. I think, what, are, what Pella, what are you? Yeah, you're just going to run council like forever. So uh, shift to repeat till canceled. So shift council and you're doing the thing. Okay. Uh, what are you? Your Tushpa. Now, Tushpa, actually, we, this is a, okay, this is our newly acquired city. So we are actually going to do some stuff here. We're not just going to have them run council. We're going to do a worker. We're going to do a conscript. We got, well, one citizen. Okay, but we could... Well, for now, we're going to do a worker and a conscript. We'll, we'll think about the rest later. Okay, so that's fine. Um, Thebes is just going to do council. Repeating council. 
Uh, we, I mean, we could put a farm specialist here, but it's not a very good farm anyway. So I don't know that that's, yeah. So we're going to do shift council to make it repeat. Okay. So good. But then here, what is this? This is Thebes, or this is uh, Syracuse, our big troop training place. Uh, and we're just going to do swordsman. Well, actually, we're not because we spent all of our money. So we'll do this. We'll do this. Uh, the specialist on this gold mine for now. Well, that won't take very long. But... Okay. Here. Oh, my uh, my boat finished. <laughs> we don't have the resources to start another one because we cratered the entire economy. So we're just going to let them run council for a year. And we may uh, build some more boats out of here eventually. Here, you're just going to run council forever. So that's fine. Here. You're just going to run council forever. Okay, and you're going to run council forever. Okay, so that simplifies our life a little bit. And yeah, good deal. Uh, so we're now at 39, Babylon is at 43, but we have four legendary wonders in the works, and yeah, all right, it looks like he fired on my longbow, my longbow off standing by himself, he took a shot at it, not the greatest move. If he fired on the longbow here, he could have done splash to the onager, which at least would have hit two units and therefore been better. But, you know, I'm not going to complain. So we'll start with two Sean. Uh, and we'll open up with the onagers. Okay. Two. Come on. Three. And four. Follow it up with the longbow. Dude, hit it. And then we will continue to smack it with in any infantry we can get uh, in range. What did you do? What did you, what did you do? No, no. Move here and hit it.
Okay. Okay. So the siege of Tushan is progressing pretty nicely. Still, we may be able to take that next turn. I, I don't. I don't know. But we'll just step into Roman territory. Oh, come on now, really? Surely I can get somebody else there. We're not going to let this asshole live, are we? He's an archer. Uh, I do not have it. Well, this guy. This is the only guy I've got. Okay, that's ridiculously expensive, but we're doing it. I don't care. Okay, so we lost nothing. This is uh, round seven. Us, nothing. Ass, one. Archer. That was a terrible play, by the way. Don't, don't do that. I was, uh, uh, that was me being frustrated with that guy. That was a waste of a lot of orders, but, you know, we had him to spare, so. Better planning last turn on my part, and I wouldn't have had to do that. I was, uh, I was fairly shitty. All right. How can, could we theoretically... How much, how much would it cost to take Gozen this turn? Because I may. No. I may just do that, whatever, if, if we can. We got, no, we don't have any more uh, training points, so I can't do any more fancy force marches or any weird shit like that. Okay, so we would need 70 metal. Can I, can I afford 70 metal? Shift click to buy ten. Yeah, okay. Well, great. And then whack him. Oh, yeah. Okay, so he lost a, I think that was a pike. Uh, oh, there will absolutely be no truce. So he lost uh, an archer and a pike. I'm going to, you know, I, I'm not going to even go back and check. I'm just going to call that a spear. I think it was probably a pike, but I'm gonna call it a spear anyway. Because I'd rather I'd rather err on the side of giving him the benefit of the doubt than not. So I don't want to make our accompl I don't want to inflate our accomplishments by calling a spearman a pike. I'd rather discount them by calling a pike a spear. So we'll call it a spear. I'm not gonna back it up to see. But we've officially moved beyond uh, what our original goals for the war are with the capture of Gozen. And with the capture of Gozen, we've captured a holy city. In fact, we've captured the, the Zoroastrian holy city, I believe. 
So we have our we have our holy city, and the only other thing standing between us and victory is capture of Asser and the the great lighthouse, and the army will just need to sit here for a few turns until uh, goes and flips. We'll heal everybody up, and then we'll push on. And same thing up here next turn. We should be able to capture Tushan. And then when we do, we'll be able to take the, the mountain pass through and approach Asser from the north. So, yeah, we're rapidly moving into the end game now. So I'll gear up for round eight. Us, us. Okay. Um, I don't know that there's. I actually, and I have to say, I actually kind of like that we made peace with the Vandals. That that's awesome. So we, we now have a peace treaty with everybody, and we are way stronger than everybody except for Babylon. So we're similar with them. So we're basically one of the two superpowers in the world. And although Babylon is ahead of us at the moment on points, we have a bunch of stuff percolating. I mean, this city's going to flip next turn. This city will flip the turn following. Two turns later, we get this, this one. Now, three turns later, we get this one, and then we'll have, so, yeah, we, we have, uh, at this point, I don't, I don't think there is a way we could lose this game, right? We're, I mean, yes, we're still behind in points, but we've got all this stuff percolating. We've already got four, leg, all four legendary wonders in the pipeline, ready to add to our point total. So that's eight right there. So 39. 40, that'll be 47. Yeah, we. I don't think we can lose this game, even if we tried to at this point. Uh, it it actually kind of surprised me. We were able to take Gozen with just one catapult on station. <laughs> seems, it seemed like it was easier than it should have been. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, okay, maybe you will get away. Maybe. I got a cataphract up there. I can probably... Force March to get. No, we don't want autonomous rule. Yeah, I don't care. Game's almost over. I do not care. Uh, families. I don't even care who this goes to, really. Who's the low? So we'll give it to the. Yeah, I don't care. We'll give it to those guys. That's nothing about that city, says artisans, but. You know, again, at this stage in the game, uh, I honestly don't know that it matters a lot. So I'm not, I'm not going to put a lot of thought into it because, yeah, I don't care. We're, we're going to win this game. Not, that's not going to be a deciding factor in any way. I'm going to put 
brain power on the decisions that will help me win the game and everything else, but I don't care. Okay. So let's get, I mean, these guys are basically, I don't know where that other, they have another archer back here somewhere and he ran away. And if he wants to run away, I am content to let him. Okay. I want to kill this onager, but I also want to take two shot. And actually, I kind of need to take two shot before I can kill that onager. So I'm going to open up with the uh, with my onagers against the city, and I'm hoping that we can do enough damage. Uh, see, I don't think we will. Okay. Well, let's see what the longbows bring to the table. Okay. I can do three forced marches. So let me bring this longbow forward. Right. Uh, yeah. So this guy go here okay this guy hello this guy attacks this guy attacks uh, that's not gonna be enough Okay, uh, hang on, hang on. No, we can't. I can't get him here. Okay. This guy, how, how far... This could be my second force march, right? So I can bring him to here. He could take the final point of damage away from the, the city. I've still got enough for one force march. So he comes here. He crushes the city. Take, take, take the city, dude. Seriously, take the city. Okay, so that that frees up the zone of control. Now I see, and I could kill that that onager, but he would be able to. Because both of these are pikes, yeah. So I could I could use my last force march, and I could come up here and kill this onager, and then I could ding this guy. But I mean, as you can see, it's not going to do much damage to him. But then he would kill my cataphract, my only cataphract. Okay. Well, I'm glad that we took two shots this turn. And we killed, I think we just killed a worker, so I don't think we get to mark anything down, really. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, he's going to get a shot then. And then next turn, we will be able to come in with our infantry and archers and all that shit and just crush all of this. I, I don't know that it's worth trading a cataphract for a banged up onager who only has one shot left in his life anyway so i don't think that's really a good trade okay so terrier flipped we now we now own terrier so same thing we'll do the three uh, repairs we will heal up our troops and you know i'm kind of surprised we really didn't see I figured he'd be all up in my business with his boats, and he really hadn't been. He's left them 
I mean, they're in the area, but man, they can stay out there for all I care. Although now that we've taken Teria, you know, maybe now he'll. So he's got seven. He's got eight ships here. Huh. Okay. And I think we finished one, right? So we have we have like a fleet of four. So just based on what we can see, he outnumbers us. Naval tonnage two to one. Uh, we don't have a stunny thing there. We'll go ahead and move him up, right? I mean, yeah. We'll go ahead. I don't. I don't know that I am really ready to rumble. But I do have my four ships kind of in the neighborhood now. And I could probably make it six. If, how much would it cost? Right, so that would cost me 190, which I have. And this would cost me uh, which I couldn't afford. Okay, so I could actually, I could give my, if I wait a turn, I could give myself two more ships with rushing, I think. Ish. That would give me six to his, what do we say, eight that we see, ten that we see. We see eight. So I'd have six ships to his eight that we see. Six better ships. Plus, guys on the coast that that would probably be enough if we hug the coast if we you know kind of force the issue like right in here we could probably beat his navy with that i just bring these onagers back down to provide supporting fire spend a couple of turns just trashing what's left of his navy and then we don't have to worry about it anymore that might not be a bad idea now that especially now that we've got all the, the advanced wonders and all this now we're just now we're just doing cleanup so and that that i think would be a and you know the other thing is only about half of these ships are full health the others have already been dinged up a little bit so yeah, I think we could totally do that. Okay, cool. Um, do we have the resources to build another Droman? Is that like a thing that we could do? It would take a hundred bucks. Okay. Sure. Let's put a Droman in the in the hopper. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let me look at my workers because I kind of want to. Yeah. Okay. So this is saying let's build a farm here. Well, let's do that. Let's build a farm there. Because we're not, I mean, we're running a deficit in food, but it's not like it's a huge deficit in food. And maybe we can. Maybe we can get enough farms up and running to, you know, uh, make much of it go away. I don't even know that we could, I don't even know that we could make it all go away. But, but even if we, I mean, even if we could, okay, so he can't, he can't quite get there, but that's fine. Yeah, let's just focus on, let's just focus on making farms. And, you know, if we can close the gap, great. If not, well, every little bit helps. I don't know that we have to get crazy with it, but 
since most of our cities are just idling on uh, on uh, what you call it on council. Yeah, let's just build farms. Solve this problem if we can. The the brute force way. Okay. This is probably not horrible farmland. Let's get to it. Okay. Sure. Let's, uh, yeah, let's build the granary right there. Okay. Don't care about the rest. Let's go. Well, this will be round. So nobody lost anything this round. So we'll do round nine. So a series dropped to 27 in the, in the point standing. They're, they're actually below Rome now. That's quite a drop. But, I mean, it's also kind of to be expected. Okay, so we gained 340 research from Babylon, and we did not get caught. Uh... Yeah, let's just, I don't know that we need those other, those other uh, guys. We'll just keep the city counts even. Um, Tyria is still doing their thing. Yeah, so I'm going to move... I'm going to move onagers to the coast. Well, I'm going to move this onager to the coast. I'm going to move the other two onagers here, just behind them. Okay. Yeah, I don't care. Um, okay. And we're going to promote you to a besieger for the next... Uh, campaign but I think I think that and the longbow should be more than enough and I will yeah but I, I do want to have fairly significant assets down here to oh we still got okay so I still got two two onagers besides that all right, so what would it take to, so like we could, we could rush this for 160 and then we could rush this now for what? Okay, so we can do both. We can do both. And that'll give me the six ships. Okay, and then I'll set them up to, to make two more starting like next year, and that will be fine. I also, we have some luxuries that we picked up from, you know, city acquisitions. So let's see what they are, and I want to dole them out before some other sieve comes along and starts asking us 
for luxuries. Okay, so we'll send these guys pearls just for the hell of it. And what do we have? It says tradable literature. Oh, but we've we've already uh, yeah. Okay, so we can we can actually give literature away to one of our to one of our allies to keep them happy. So who's okay? So I think you guys are getting what ivory. Uh, well, let's do a trade mission because we we have the points for that now. We'll do an influence mission. And we will, can we, uh, manage luxuries. Yeah, so let's send them some literature too. Okay, so we're playing nice, nice with the, uh, with the Persians. We're running the influence thing. We've got 100 orders in the bank. And what is this city? Oh, this is our one of our one of our new acquisitions. Uh, and they need to repair walls. So we'll just do that. Repair for three rounds. And then we're done. Then we can actually start putting this city to work for us. But for right now, that's the best we can do. So, yeah, the empire is growing. We are now just two points behind Babylon. Uh, Babylon has researched two additional. Uh, text, so they are significantly outpacing us in research, but we have a whole lot of other stuff going on that Babylon does not. And as long as we keep doing that, then we're going to win this, this game. We're just going to keep hammering Assyrian cities, and we're going to get victory points because we're going to capture a city that has a wonder in it. So we're just going to keep doing that. Okay, and here we're going to, okay, so we're going to pull these guys back behind the line, right? Because they got dinged up and we want to keep everybody healthy because that's how we're winning the game. Troop management. We're going to bring my swordsman up. We're going to whack him and bring another swordsman up. We're going to whack him. And this is a who? This is a pikeman. He's going to lose a pikeman because we're going to bring the longbow up and whack him. Yeah, dude, I don't care. I have the troops. I will just keep attacking you until you die. You don't understand. I know you're on a highly defensible tile, and that's fine. And you're still going to die. So, there you go. Give this guy a seizure. Everybody's healing. They are healed. Uh, we captured Tushpa. We pulled everybody. No, we just can't. Okay. So, uh, we can't see. He's hiding behind this guy, so we can't. Okay, but that that's fine. You know what? You can sit back there, and we will just bide our time. Because, I mean, Dude, the thing you want is the city. So if you want it that bad, come and get it. All right. But we don't need all of these onagers up here. I'm going to leave one to guard the pass. But these other three, 
we can go ahead and start moving down for the assault on Asser because we're going to need it there. I am sure he's got moat, tower, he's got the whole kit uh, just waiting to be, you know, to unleash on us. So it's gonna, that's going to be a, a more significant uh, battle than these others have been. So we're going to leave, eh, let's call it two infantry and two archers with uh, an onager up here. And I, I, I think that, and plus we got these two. So we'll, yeah, so that'll be plenty. So we'll leave these two archers. We got a, we got an archer, an archer, sword, pike. Yeah, so we can just pull all of these guys south. And that, that's more than enough. I don't think well, we got six six dudes total, right? So two pike, a uh, cataphract, a swordsman, two archers, and an onager. I don't think he has enough army. That's probably more than his entire army that he has remaining at this point. So I think we're going to be fine. Okay. Um. Does Niblet even have walls? I mean, is this like even a thing? We could probably just walk over here with some longbow. And uh, no, okay, they've got walls. So we would need at least one catapult, I would say. Preferably two, but <clears throat> Yeah. Well, I'm not in a great hurry to do that anyway. So let's let's deal with his navy first. We'll see if we can We'll see if we can lure them to the coast, and I'm hoping that that catapult will be a sufficient draw to get them to the coast. Uh, all right, so let's move you. No, let's move you to here. But that's all we'll do, and we'll stop. So six ships next turn. That should be pretty nice. Well, move you out here. And build another farm. Okay. Uh, I think I'm done. Yeah, we're done. So in the next few turns, we should tie and then pass Babylon on our way to the victory threshold. Well, our next major objective is just to get the onagers that were up attacking Tushan down the valley, around the mountain range, get ready for an assault on Asser. Well, that's that's pretty much the game. I mean, we, we get... Ooh, okay. He, he killed one of my swordsmen. Okay. It's game on. So, round 10. I got complacent. And we lost a swordsman. All right, well, that got my attention. And he knocked the crap out of a couple of other units there. Yeah, okay, she can do what she wants. Uh, how much would it cost to buy that kind of food? Yeah, way more than I've got, so, okay. No, nope, we're not doing governors right now. Did his navy do anything at all? No. Okay. Uh, military strength is still much weaker. 
Okay. But you wouldn't know it because that was a big hit. That was a big hit. Okay, so we got a trireme, a droman, and a bireme. So it's a it's kind of a mixed bag, but I mean that that was a big hit. He definitely took me by surprise and got my attention with that attack. Okay. Uh, well. We know better than to be complacent. That was my own damn fault. And, you know, that was actually, it was a really bad time for me to get complacent because we had to divide our army to go up and attack Tushan, I mean, I knew better. I knew better than to uh, get careless with my guys, and I did anyway. So that was a mistake. And we paid for it. We lost a swordsman. That was, uh, that was expensive. Won't be doing that again. Okay, Tushan is still reasonably well defended. Bulk of the army is coming back home. We're gathering our strength for a push into the capital. He has just demonstrated he is still plenty strong enough to give us uh, some problems. And in fact, these are mangonels, so he's actually got better siege gear than we do right now, because I don't even have the tech for that. So, yeah, he can, we're going to have to be careful. Approaching mangonels is, uh, that's dangerous. We're going to be, well, we have an answer for that. We're going to burn force marches and just get right up in his face really fast. But, I mean, we're going to have to do that because, yeah. Those are, those are some deadly, I would say they're probably the second deadliest unit in the game behind cataphracts. Uh, so that's, that's pretty devastating. Okay, so we got, we got this new boat. He does not give us, uh, well, I'm just going to put it right here. Uh, he'll be able to attack it with two. Uh, but if he brings two, then we should be able, because the onagers can reach there. One, two, three. Well, one onager can reach there. The other can reach here. So that's fine. Well, okay. Yeah. No. No. So let's let's bring. Let's bring the Droman to here. Because now he can hit it with three. Which may be enough to sink it. But that'll expose a bunch of his fleet. So let's do that. And then we will bring the rest of our fleet. Can this guy? No. See, we don't have anybody who can. Okay. So we'll leave the rest of our fleet just out of sight down here. So we can... Uh, so we can just come up in force and jump his shit if he decides to take that bait. Okay, so we'll have five shit. We're, we're just going to write this one off. We're going to assume that he's going to stun it and be well on his way to killing it and whatever. So, But we're going to come up here with our fleet to counterattack. And then we're just going to hit him as hard as we can with everything else. So, yeah. And we got to build a swordsman because we lost a swordsman, so we need to replace it. Uh, we're going to build a droman because we're going to lose ships. 
and we want to keep the pressure on. Okay, we can do that. And then we want to build a drum in here. I'll take 275 of our, or no, 835 of our, okay. So we'll do that. And then I have enough civics. I think I should, we'll go ahead and just rush this guy out the door. But then if we need to, we can force March him and get him up into the fight as well. Okay. Uh, so we lost a swordsman and I pulled back. So we didn't actually kill anything this turn. Nor will we. Yeah, we will not. We're just repositioning right now. Okay, all of are moving around. Everybody getting ready. We'll move. Now, Legend is not going anywhere. Legend has earned his retirement, but he is staying put. But I am going to need some bait. Okay. Now over here, do I have, yeah, so I want to leave one onager here. You're just going to have to move. I'm going to leave him here and unlimbered. And I'm going to Put the pikeman here. So he's covered. We're protecting the city. And we're fine. And this onager will come up. And the swordsman will come up. Okay. So these guys are all good. These guys are all good. So this this is basically what we're looking at here. This is basically the army that we will take north to uh, lay siege to Asser. That, that's plenty. I don't even know how many units that is. Let me do a quick count. Six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 22. We got 24 units here. So this is this is a big, burly, powerful uh, unit. Those icons look strikingly different to me. I mean, I guess it's just different families, but I don't know. It just looks weird. But anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to give this guy Eagle Eye. He's only 10 points from a promotion, so why not? Okay. Do I have any? Uh, let me just check my archers. So he's not really close. Let me also check my. Yeah, see, so this guy is. Let's give him shrapnel. I was going to give him uh, splash 25%. Okay, we like that. That makes him. A little bit deadlier. That's going to take 200. We don't want to spend that kind of points. All right. What about what about you guys? You're at 170. You're at 140. You're at 125. No, I'm not spending those. I'm not spending the points on that. Okay. 
then yeah, I think we're done. So he killed a swordsman. We killed nothing of Assyria's. That round 10 went to Assyria. Well, I don't know if we can say it went to Assyria since he's lost like five cities now. But he got the drop on us and that, I mean, credit where credit is due. So we're ending the turn and we're going to see what we can see. Okay. <clears throat> Eritrea has some longbows to worry about. We're not promoting new governors right now. Okay. Um... This guy is our, our new worker for uh, Tushpa. I don't even know what Tushpa really need. Well, actually, I do. We need more farms. So he probably just going to build. Okay, what are you building out here? You building a granary. Well, good. In that case, we will just step over here and build a farm. That will eventually get some benefit from said granary. Well, that worked for me. Okay, so what is it? Teria has finished repairing its uh, walls. So we're just going to do a worker and a conscript to get the ball rolling here. And we're going to do another Droman right here. I don't care if we don't have the resources. We have the money. So we're going to make it happen. All right. Now, he did not attack where I expected him to attack, which is, I mean, I like that. That's, that's actually awesome. Okay, we're going to heal this guy. We're gonna, let, let's focus, let's do this, right? So this guy is gonna come up and pop him in the face. And we, I mean, we are badly, badly outnumbered here. Uh, and I, I, I almost don't care because we have the economic might at this point. Okay, what is this? A Byream? Okay, so we lost nothing this turn. And Assyria lost. Yeah. So we at this point, we have sufficient economic strength that we can just bulldog him. I mean, even, even if... He, he outnumbers us at sea. I, I don't even care because we, at this point, we can just outbuild him and outfight him and outproduce him 
and we're, he's just going to die. So he lost a second birene. Okay. I'd like to be able to get this guy. I think he's, yeah, he's his stunner. Okay. Well, then, and he's, he's badly wounded too. He's a, he's a badly injured stunner. So can we just come out here and we can't quite kill you, but that's fine. I've got more ships. So what is this guy? He is a, he's yet another Byrene. You know what? I'm, I'm even going to burn the necessary orders to bring this dude from all the way the hell over here. And yeah, we're just going to, okay. So you lost a third Byrene asset. Kill my swordsman. Uh huh. We gonna make it. We gonna make it terribly expensive for you. Okay, and then this guy is gonna come back over here, and we are gonna start working on the next one. So come on, bring it, bring it. Okay, so that that I mean we I don't even these guys are probably all stunners. Okay, he's not. He's not, he's not, he's not, he is, and he's not. So this guy, this is our guy right here. He's the, he's the one that can complicate our life. But at the moment, okay, so he's got two, four, he's got six ships left, and we've got six ships on the water. So we're even right now. Oh, actually, we got seven ships. Hell yeah, we got the advantage. Can I sink this fool, this, this stunner? Can I get all the way up here and just do it? Because I, I want him dead. I want him dead. And that way, it's, you don't have any stunners, and neither do I. And that's fine so let's yeah let's do that let's just make this guy disappear All right and what is this this is another byreme so he's lost a fourth byreme this turn okay so now oh the scales are tipping my friend okay and then we can bring we took the shot with the uh, longbow so we can come up here, and that is a fifth Byreme that we have been able to take out in one go. Now that's what I'm talking about. He got four little Byremes surrounded by three, four, five, seven Dromen. Eat it. You might have won the first battle on the water, but uh, you ain't going to win the second one. Okay, so that's done. I think I want to, yeah, let's bring up some more, All right? And let's start working on this guy right here. Come on, come on, let's get it done. We won't kill him, of course, but we will. We will let him know we stand in there. Okay. Could I, at, the, at this point, could I, how much would it, what would it take to upgrade? It would take me 43, four, a little over 4,300. Okay. Well, I, I could actually do that, right? Because I could sell uh, enough stone. Yeah. And now I can cataphract archer. Okay, so we need a hundred food, and we got that. So he's now the. This was the thing that I bought from the, the Persian. So he's now the like the Mac Daddy version of that. Okay, so he's. I like it. We're ready. We have two really. Ace, uh, 
cavalry units. We're going to get these guys across the water because we're going to need them. And okay. We still got slightly better than 100 orders. Uh, all right. That was a mistake. He's going to lose all three of those. I don't even care what I got to do to kill them, but they're all three going to die. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we can't because we can't heal because you're inside. Okay. So you're going to come right here. And we're going to hit you, and you're going to do some splash damage over to this guy. You are going to come right here. Same thing. Okay. You... Um, what? Oh, well, hang on then. I don't have the training points to do this attack. One, two, three. yeah, okay, but we have to do this attack. So it doesn't matter that I don't have the training points. We just have to find a different way to do it. Okay, so we killed one manga now. We about to kill a second manga now. Because again, I don't care what it takes, they are not surviving the turn. Yeah, none of them, none of the three will survive the turn. So that's a second manga nail. Okay. Perfect. That's eight. We'll move you up. And Assyria loses a mangonel. So that's five Byremes and three mangonels this turn. Holy shit. That was evil, brutal, nasty attack. Okay. We bring in these, oh shit, we got to put a dude in the city. I paused my capture. That's going to set us back a little. Okay, well, we're, we're doing it now, so we'll have goes in by next turn. Uh, everybody healed. These guys are coming up. I need another swordsman at or near the front. And we need to get these guys on around. This is taking longer than I'm liking. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, everybody, all of our, all of our guns are around, around the mountain now. 
That's the important thing. Everybody else, I mean, yeah, these guys matter. But without the guns, we can't do significant damage to the city. And without significant damage to the city, the siege is going to take way too long. So, yeah, the guns. The guns need to get there. We need, well, we don't have the juice to force march them. We're only going to have enough for one force march. So it's going to take some time. But we're going to make that, yeah, that's just got to be a thing. We're going to make that happen. Okay, um, we need to infiltrate Asser, right? I mean, that just needs to happen. Can we, we don't have enough to force march. You know, do we never, did, I thought we did infiltrate, we just didn't have a spy network there, but apparently, apparently we did not. Okay, can I just, let me take this back, but no. Okay, so yeah, we're taking it back to remain hidden. Oh, wait, no. Now, because I'm not, I have to be touching the border, and I'm not touching the border from there. Okay, didn't I have a spy back home uh, that I had moved, like, to safety? Yeah, this guy. Okay, well then, how close can you get? I mean, even if it takes you till next turn to get there. Oh, you can get there right now. Do it. Uh, create an agent network in Asser. And let's staff it. I don't care with who. I mean, this guy for the science. Okay, cool. And cool. Now we know what we're up against can i yeah okay well let's get i as i've been conquering cities i haven't been reassigning my agents and i needed to so that was a that was another mistake so okay well that's the last of the really good science producing guys but at least this gives us a better field of vision that was i can't believe i forgot to do that till just now we may not we may not have been surprised by um the mangonels and lost the swordsman if i had been thinking but i was in a hurry and i i got careless and i did not make best use of those resources so that was entirely my fault okay Okay, we'll have this captured in two turns. So we'll be at 43 and then no, 43, 44, 45. This will put us at 46. Because the, the holy, I think he's got the holy Pussy Watsits here, the, the building that goes with our religion. I don't even know what it's called. But that thing that we that you build when you found a religion. I think he's got that here. So we'll get the points for that. Is this it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Adder version. Blah, blah, blah. So that's worth two victory points. Plus the city itself is three. And then another victory point for uh, Tushan when we get it. So that's four. That'll put us at 46, tied with Babylon. And that's before the four legendary wonders worth eight points total start to complete, which will be, you know, like 10 years from now, I guess. Yeah, okay, so this one's 10 years out. This one's eight years out. 12 years. So, you know, well, I mean, we'll, we'll get them. They'll be staggered. We'll get them. 
but each one of those, this is seven. So each one of those is going to be worth an extra two points. And then whatever other cultural, yeah, I don't even know like how close. Okay, so like Chiclet, reasonably close to getting another culture bump. Uh, Athenea, fairly close. This guy, like never. Uh, Eritrea, like never. Heraclea, probably, yeah, never. Okay, but that's, I mean, that's at least two points more from just cultural maturation that I saw in our existing cities. This guy's about to give us another point. He won't be too far. So, there, yeah, so we got, we got this. That That's points, 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 you know, just building up from a variety of different sources plus an extra uh, victory point with this uh, economic reform in three years. So, yeah, 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 we got this. Okay, and you know what else we can do? We can steal research from the Babylonians again, maybe? No, see, our, our relationship is going down with them for that. So let's, uh, but yeah, can we, let's do a trade mission and some influence. I want to I wanna keep that high. Okay, so better. We'll leave him right where he is. And I think we'll be done. So let's see what the Assyrians do. Yeah, man. Okay. An Acadian archer for 300 wood. All right. Uh, let's. Sold. Sixty more culture. Yeah, well, add a yeah, I don't mind that. Doesn't want to do any of the other stuff. Okay, we'll uh, again just give it to the sages. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to analyze what would be the best 
course of action as far as like who's the most efficient to give it to because honestly don't especially care i mean we're 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 right on the line of winning the game i don't know that that obsessing over those kinds of details is gonna materially change anything so i'm not gonna really lose any sleep over it i don't think uh, oh we got wait we got an archer back here don't we yeah why don't you go mess this guy up for like bothering us here kill this fool all right yeah kill this fool well maybe you won't kill him kill him but you know close enough yeah that works okay I'm not going to do any more buying and selling. We'll just take the pikemen. I mean, again, the difference between, at this point in the game, the difference between a pikeman and a swordsman is not going to be something that loses the game for me, right? We're, we just need an infantry we can stick somewhere to attack something, and we're fine. So I'm not going to give it a lot of thought. when when the game reaches this point you're really less focused on the tactics of like i must move this unit this way and move these units in this specific order to do this thing to you know and but by this point in the game though that that's not that's not really where the game is. This is broad tactical strokes that keep us marching to the victory line of X number of victory points before the other guy. I mean, that that's where we are. We're not really focused too heavily on the nth degree tactics of careful maneuver and all that. that that's, yeah, that shit went out the window when we saw that the victory that the that the finish line was in sight now it's just about you know keeping the empire focused on that end goal and and getting there first that that's that's kind of where we're doing our thing okay what is this this is another byrene so we didn't lose anything this is, we're on round 12 And although he made like five attacks, we lost nothing. And Syria is about to lose a Virene. Okay. They probably gonna lose a second Virene. Why, yes, they are. And then these two boats now, now, where did he run to? Where did that guy run to? It was over here somewhere. I don't see him anymore. Okay. And we're not going to go too far afield looking for him. So, uh, this guy, I was just going to come here. This guy is going to come here. And that's a trireme.
Okay. Uh, so we destroyed over the over the last two years, round eleven and twelve. We've sunk seven of his ships. A total, no, eight of his ships. A total of seven biremes and a trireme. So I don't know how many more ships he's got. I think he's got a, a, at least three that were up here. And I, one that got away. So he's probably got four to six, call it. But at this point, I think we're even... Uh, beating him in total strength on the water. So, and that's, and that's good. These guys are just going to come home then. And we'll heal them up. Uh, keep them kind of hugging the coast. And their presence here will free up the rest of our of our army. Right, we don't. I mean, we might keep a catapult here just as a as an insurance policy. Well, I mean, they all have to stay this turn. But yeah, next turn, depending on if or whether we see any more naval units, we might just start wholesale pulling out of here and getting ready for the next uh, getting ready for the next assault. So we're just going to come up like this. Oh, wait. No, I don't even need to do that. Why would I do that? We've got a catapult unlimbered and ready to go. So he can fire. And then, yeah, dude, fire, please. Fire. Fire. Thank you. Okay. And then we get the kill shot. Right. So, yeah, I think we're ready to take on Niblet. So next turn, we'll start moving catapults up. We'll get these guys healed up, and then they can demonstrate here and maybe push toward Niblet. Uh, we got a, that mangonel is going to be a problem. But I've got an answer for that because I've got my, uh, this guy. Right, so he can, we'll just kind of leave him here, but he can kind of be skulking in the vicinity of. Okay, so how close could, right, these guys could get to here. Is that, uh, see, I don't like leaving him on the coast. Yeah, that's a bad idea. That is not even close enough to hit uh, his stuff anyway. So, but now that we can see, now that we can see what's going on, uh, he's going to have that cataphract coming out next turn. And that's going to be evil. Um, but let's see what we, let's see what we can do. We can't do anything to stop the cataphract from coming out. There's there's just nothing to be done on that front. But we can still move archers up and start plinking away at his city, right? And then come up here and start denting it. We'll come up here with another one. Because as soon as we take Asher, that that's the game. I mean, we're, we won't quite have the points yet, but that, that'll be the game. I mean, we'll have to let the city flip and, you know, whatever. But, yeah, he's, he's when he loses his capital, he's done. So, we, yeah, we can't quite get there. Okay. 
but we can we can close most of that distance I want to keep my pikeman kind of in the backfield because cataphract comes out I want I want to be able to uh, smack it I want to be able to smack him in the face with the with the pike and this is dangerous as hell because I don't have car a infiltrated I had no idea what he might have there and I am just leaving the door open for him to come in get around my guys and get up here and get all up in my catapult business but I don't want to put the catapults on the coast because those guys wrecked one of my swordsmen. So we're going to take a more measured approach. I am going to put there we go. So that does provide some cover for the catapults okay now I'm feeling better about things we got to get them completely surrounded so that yeah okay now we're now we're feeling better and then I'll put an elephant in goes in. I'll put another one just behind. Okay. I'll put a couple of swordsmen or and this maybe this one longbow. Okay. So that that's this is kind of a bad past. It's a narrow strip of land we have to get through with him having a pretty strong naval presence here that makes it a little dangerous but we got most of the guys through it I'm gonna spend the 50 points to give him guard which will give him a 10% defense bonus in case he is attacked Okay, so then we're done here. Uh, he's going to heal up. Okay. I think we're in pretty good shape then. So Round two of the naval battle, which took, there was a big gap between the two, but round two of the naval, naval battle, we turned the tables and kicked his ass, drove him away from Tyria, thanks to the help of our, thanks with the help, uh, to the help of our army, and we got, what is this, we got a fur that we could give to somebody, I'm going to give it to one of my, whoever the lowest relationship family is, because I don't think, yeah, nobody's crazy about fur anyway, so I'll just give it to whoever is the lowest to kind of keep them happy. So furs, there you go. And uh, what? I think we're I think we're in good shape, right? So we're just gonna. Well, let me check. Yeah, I've only got five orders left. Screw it. All right, we're saving them. And we're hitting in turn to see what the Assyrians will do. And we are now in first place again. We're tied with Babylon. 46 victory points apiece. And we've got a whole lot more in the oven cooking, ready to pop out when it is their time. So... Man, yes. 
We're right there on the line. Okay, what are you guys doing? Ah, uh, there's his little ship. Oh, I count four naval vessels left. But Aster really doesn't have a lot of defenses. He hasn't been building it up like I... I mean, he saw that we were coming. He's had plenty of advance warning. I don't know. I would have kind of thought maybe prepare some better defense works, but I guess he was focused on building troops and that just kind of fell by the way, but I'd have been focused more on static defenses, especially in an important city like the capital. But that's okay. Um, we will take advantage of that and we should be able to capture it fairly quickly. So, shit. Did, no, okay, I attacked this guy, right? Okay. Ah, construct protective city walls. Absolutely. I think we want commander. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, the only because of the only reason I was going to do aut autarky before was because we were saving resources for the wonders. No, we've already built the wonders, so that kind of limited value at this point. Okay, so these guys are the lowest. We'll give them to them. You know, I'm not, again, not spending a lot of time and careful consideration on this shit. We're just, somebody needs to get it, whoever the lowest. Uh, the relationship is will be the lucky winner and we're done that, that's yeah okay so the latest religious zealot guys have been dealt with what do we have over here who is this oh we captured Tushan it has flipped to our column so we'll repair the walls for a start Okay, and that officially pulls us ahead of Babylon. And now we have more furs that we can give to the other families. Uh, we'll send furs. We'll send furs. We'll Go to the Babylonians, and we'll send furs. Uh, just completely unasked because I have the luxuries to spare, and I want my friends to be happy. So, yeah. Okay, so that's done. This city is now friendly territory, so these guys can heal. And that will be the first order of business. Because we do have some enemy troops skulking in the neighborhood. And I want to begin hunting them down before they can become problematic yeah see we got we got like four units kind of scattered around here I, I don't I don't especially like that so let's just make sure that that's not even a thing okay uh, over here we got more healing to do repair and recover so naval units get patched up army units ok 
get patched up. I think we now have a larger fleet, at least in the vicinity. So I'm not going to worry too much about uh, that. Okay, he's got some pretty stout defenses there. So I'm not going to... I don't have enough training points to make a general advance. I'm sorry, I don't have enough training points to make a siege advance, so I'm going to make a general advance and just kind of get my guys in the neighborhood, but not quite in range. And then next turn, we should be able to Yeah, I, mean, I don't even especially care where they go. I just kind of want guys up here, you know, and then the particulars will iron out when we get ready for the attack next turn. But for now, I just want a big honking collection of dudes kind of in the vicinity of Niblet. Okay, and that will... That will work. Now I could. I don't think it would really amount to anything. I could go ahead and send my ships up here. Three of them could pound on the city, but without artillery support, I don't. I don't know that that is really gonna like accomplish anything. So. I mean, it would bottle his ship up inside. Yeah, that might be worth doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep his, his ship trapped in the, in the city then. And we won't, I mean, we'll just do like nominal damage here. It's not going to be anything groundbreaking, but it doesn't have to be, really. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this guy just moves up here and starts to plink away at the city a little bit. And two turns from now, because we, we can't well, next turn the archers will be in range, and then so they'll they'll start to uh, inflict a little bit more damage, and then the turn following, the onagers, which will be in range next turn, but have to spend a turn on limbering, so the damage will ratchet up every turn for the next three turns. This turn, we just do some little love taps with the boats. It's not really anything noteworthy. And uh, next turn, it kind of starts to get hurty with the, you know, the, the longbows can actually inflict some noteworthy damage to the city wall. So that'll be more. And then the following turn after that, then we see, oh shit, yeah, that, that's going to start hurting. And then like two turns after that, it should fall. So we should have Niblet in five, barring any any unforeseen stuff. So his boat's bottled up. We've done a little bit of damage. And yeah, that's fine. And the rest of our orders will be spent here. Uh, first and foremost, we close the rest of the dist. Oh, well, first and foremost, can we reach that? Now we can't. Okay, then we don't worry about it. If we can't reach it, we don't worry about it. Let's focus on what we can do. And what we can do is beat the ever living shit out of the city of Asher, even without even without catapults up and ready, we can, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Okay.
and that that gives me enough right so I can move a catapult up and unlimber can move the second catapult okay so this guy has to move and he actually I don't have too many uh, I can't do a whole lot of force marching but I can do a couple and we will Okay. Do I have another? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Another longbow, which we can put right here. And then I've got, where'd that swordsman go? The highly decorated guy. Yeah. Okay. So. You're going to go here, smack the mangonel, longbow, so we got, this is what, round 13, and we didn't lose anybody, and Assyria loses a mangonel. Fun is about to lose her capital. What a shame. What a shame. Okay. So what else can we get to within striking distance of the capital? Not, not enough to take it, unfortunately. Yeah. Not enough to take it. Well, I don't know. Maybe. No. Oh, I'm I'm out of orders. Okay, so now that's that's as good as it's gonna get. Okay, so we damn near took the capital this turn, but I thought it was more important to crush that mangonel so he wouldn't be raining fire down on us. But we'll we'll have it next. There's nothing. There's nothing he can do to prevent us from taking the capital next turn. All right, I'm ending the turn, prepping for round 14. Us, ass, let's see if they kill anything. I, I doubt they will. I mean, they, they did get the drop on me that one turn where I kind of got careless. Um, But as long as I stay focused, uh, I I don't see that it's really possible for them to, if they kill any of my units, it's my fault. I, I have done something wrong. I have gotten careless or overlooked or, I mean, because we, we are in charge of the map at this point. So if, if I lose any units, it's because I screwed up. They're going to put the elephant in the city and push someone back. That's a good play. I mean, that's it won't save the city, but that, that's the best play he had. Okay, so we are now, we have widened our lead over Babylon. Yeah. 
Yeah, we need training more than we need civics right now. Sure, we'll do that. Okay. Welcome the merchant. And it doesn't, okay, so we'll do military prestige because we can get it a turn faster. Okay. Uh, let's focus on the Siege of Niblet first. <clears throat> so, Niblet, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some, some infantry, like as many infantry as we can, right up in their face. All right, so the inner ring will be infantry right here. And then the secondary ring, and this is going to be painful because mangonels have a range of two, so they're going to be a range, minimum range of two. They can't shoot at stuff immediately adjacent to them, but doesn't matter. He can shoot over their heads, hit the archers, and they'll still take splash damage, and that's going to suck. So, but there's nothing. There's literally nothing we can do about that. I mean, that's just. Okay, that's what you're going to do. We are going to give our uh, catapults what cover we can from incoming mangonel fire, which means we're going to put them in urban tiles. I don't remember them. This guy is gonna come over here. Okay. So that that's our attack force, really. So let's start with the ships, because they're not gonna do much damage. All right. We'll just kinda nickel and dime him with the ships. And then we'll open up with the two longbow and then we have three besieging infantry okay so we took niblet to about half unless something catastrophic happens we'll have it next turn because we we took him to half without any onager fire so next turn we do the ships we do the longbows we do the onagers, and then we do the the infantry, and yeah, that's at some point in that array he loses his stuff. But if you'll notice, he does have a mangonel back here, and that we cannot allow to stand. So we we have enough to do one force march. And I am going to use it to, and we're not doing a huge amount of damage, but I am going to use it to get up in his face to see if I can force him to move that. Because if he doesn't move it, actually, you know what? No, no. Um, change my mind. I'm going to use the one unit we have that will guarantee that he has to move and therefore cannot fire. I'm going to use an elephant. We only got the one force march, let's make it a good one, right? So, because he has to unlimber to fire, and he has to limber to move, so now no more fire. And he, he will probably send everything he can to kill that elephant. But he, he may even succeed. But Niblet will be ours next turn, so mission accomplished. We He did what we needed him to do. He prevented this mangonel from shooting at our siege force. And, yeah, that's, that's what we wanted. So he's done. And the siege of Niblet is firmly underway. Uh, here, let's open up with the onagers. We've got, well, we've got one in range. So we'll open up with the one we have. And it did good onager things. And we'll continue with the uh, longbow. 
They will damn near knock the walls down. And again, the, the city walls only have one hit point left, so I'm specifically bringing up a conscript to do that last point of damage to the wall. Because I, all of my other troops would do at least two, and I don't want to waste their their power on that last one hit point to the wall. So once again, conscript saves the day and makes everybody's job a lot easier. I just, I love militia and conscripts. They, they just, they suck as like, military units they they're weaker than everything else you'll be fighting and they're just indispensable despite the fact that they're not great at standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with your enemies they get in the way they do that one extra point you need when and where you need it to kill you know whatever and they're just handy to have around i mean as you've seen uh, i have used them as bait I have used them to do that extra point of damage we need to get a kill so that my good units get the experience. So if I need to expose a unit to, you know, get uh, to, to get a kill shot, great. I can expose uh, I can expose a conscript or a militia and yeah, so then he gets he gets dinged up and my, my real guys don't. And that's and that's perfect. I mean, that that's exactly what you want to use them for. So yeah. And what? Does anybody remember? Well, I have no idea what he had in there in in the city. Uh, oh, he had an elephant. Yeah, he had one elephant. So he loses an elephant, and he lost a uh, mangonel. No, he didn't lose the mangonel. We just drove him off. That that's fine. Okay. Uh, we need to kill this. This is a what? This is a pikeman. Yeah. We need to kill the pikeman. But yeah, I mean, I, I know. And if you watch other people's streams, you'll see people are like, oh man, pikemen suck. I can't believe anybody would ever. Or, uh, you know, militia and conscripts suck. I can't believe anybody would ever. Okay. And, and they do. I, I, I will readily admit they, as a military unit, yes, they completely blow. And they're handy as hell anyway. So, you know, they have a place. That's all I'm saying. They have a place. And if you're not building them, then you're taking more casualties. You're taking more, you're, you're losing more good troops than you need to. So, they lost the pike. Yeah, if you want to control the battlefield and mitigate your losses, if you're not building militia and conscripts, you're, you're taking heavier losses than you should be. So. All right, well, that's pretty much the game. Uh, I will play it out, but yeah, we're we're basically done now because this city was worth two extra victory points with the uh, with the Great Lighthouse. So as soon as it flips, we're gonna get that. Uh, yeah, we're... but this was this was a fun game. I mean, it, there was a lot. To be done, you know, to really to to get us to the point where victory was assured, because it, for a while there it wasn't. Uh... Oh yeah, okay. I was having. I don't know, like a brain fart for a minute, and I and I couldn't quite wrap my brain around what I was trying to do. That was weird. 
Uh, but I, I got it all sorted now in my head. So I think we're just going to build another swordsman. And that's probably the last military unit we will build because I, I don't think we're going to need anything else. And I believe the only, yeah, okay, so they're still similar. But everybody else is either weaker or much weaker, right? Yeah, so we're fine. I don't think we will need any more military units from now to the end of the game. Oh, Mangonel fire. Yeah, okay. So, yes, this is Cataphract killed a longbow. So, round 15, we lost a longbow. Okay, let's share. Trade to Rome, 11 science. No. Uh, no. All right, for now, we just prefer not to trade then. Those are crap deals, and we're already on good terms with you, so, yeah, we don't care. All right. This, this really hurt, though. Uh, losing a longbow this late into the game. Yeah, that was that was painful. I mean, not from a military standpoint. We we certainly can take the hit, um, but I I feel bad. I mean, because he, their military is so much weaker than ours. I just I just didn't have enough guys to get back up here, so I couldn't prevent him from firing like we did with the the elephants and that was the result he had a cataphract nearby and he just beat the shit out of my uh out of my dude so okay um Well, I mean, I don't want him to, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want him to, this is not a mangonel, though, this is just a, okay, he's going to lose one onager, and that's fine. Uh, can I, I don't think, yeah, workers don't ex exert zone of control so I can just walk right over here and beat the shit out of this. We gotta see if we can keep him from firing a second time. That was painful. Oh yeah. I am 100% sure I can find something that I can get into range. There it is. So, he lose a mangonel. Okay. We're capturing the capital. This guy just got the shit kicked out of him. Let's, let's walk him back home. Okay, so, but yeah, we still, same problem, this guy just will not move, so we can't, 
Okay, but wait, uh, could I? Could I make him move? I got a hundred uh, training points, right? Okay, where's my yeah? Now this worker could actually come up here to this, okay? And then this war, this uh, swordsman, come up here to this swordsman by the tile. Right, and then the worker could yeah, let's just build a quarry, and then we put a we put a thing on the quarry. We we expand our borders, and then we can just push him out the way because now he's in our territory. Okay, so that that's how we fix that. All right. Tushpa, we are going to, Tushpa has 18 civics, so we are going to do this, and that's all we can do for right now, because he's only got the one citizen, but Tushpa will be increasing its culture level again in seven years, so that's awesome. Uh, good. Good. Who is this? Gozen. Gozen, I think we just conquered, right? Have they? No, they just finished their wall repair. Okay. So Gozen just needs a worker and a conscript. And that'll keep him busy until, actually, until the end of the game. And we're actually making a surplus of food, thanks to our relentless farming efforts we did there for a while. So I'm not going to actually do anything with the workers, and we are just going to say, ah, shit, I should have uh, should have done a steel research. Eh, I'll do that next turn, because we're still behind in tech, and that would kind of speed things along a little bit. But, uh, okay, so round 15, we lost a longbow. And he lost an onager and a mancanel. So we're moving to round 16. And so this the round 16, the, the first part of the war taking the first city took 16 years. So this is the next 16 years of the war. And we have managed to take one, two, three, four, five, six additional cities in the same time frame it took us to take that first one. So, oh yeah, look at that. I kind of figured he was gonna gonna throw everything he had to kill that elephant because that that basically cost him a city. So yeah, not surprised we lost an elephant there. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think we want the poet. Yes, we want the uh, right. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, steal research from Assyria. We don't want to steal from Babylon because they're right on the border of being tickled with us, whatever the 200, the plus 200 thing is. Okay, so here we've built our last military unit that we're going to build, I think, pretty much for the whole game. So... We're just going to uh, convoy adds one science a year, but we're the game's going to be over before we get a whole lot more of those. 
uh, going on. So, yeah. Okay. And we're going to repeat council there. Oh, what else we got? Oh, this is Tushan. What? Have you built? Okay. Tushan just flipped then, right? No. Yeah, they just finished their repairs. So they need a worker and a conscript. Uh, that'll take them to the rest of the game. So that's fine. Okay. Then, what are we going to do next? I mean, we're basically, yeah, we're at 51 points out of 57. So really, all we're waiting for at this point is our wonders that we started a while ago to get done. Because that, that's enough points to win the game for us right there. We had three wonders at six points. That puts us at 57. Actually, I think we had four, right? One, two, three. And then didn't we have one over here in Syracuse? Yeah, I think. Yeah, four. So in what? Seven years, we win the game. Or even if we don't do anything else. Actually, we'll win before then because Assyria will, Asher will flip and that'll give us three right off the bat. So, yeah, we don't really have to do anything at this point to win. We just uh, hit and turn a few times and that's it. But I don't want to do that because I don't, that would be careless and reckless. And I am not a careless or reckless person as a rule. So we could though. I mean, that we could just, you know, say screw whatever these other guys do and we'll just take the hit and it's fine because we can absorb it. And Yes, we, we probably could absorb it, but we're not doing that. Okay. Yeah, so next turn, I mean, no matter what happens, Next turn, uh, Niblet falls. We will take a big hit. He will probably, he's got the mangonel. He's gonna, he's gonna do that. He's gonna bring his crossbow. Yeah, that's probably enough to kill, but we want to like this to the pikeman. So we're probably gonna lose our highly decorated pikeman. And that, that sucks. But, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a minute. Can we do the same thing again? Yes, we can. Fuck you, Mangonel. <laughs> yeah, screw you guys. He's, he's probably going to kill this guy too, um, you know, but I don't care. I mean, I hate it. We've had those elephants a long time. But that's going to give us the last turn we need to actually take the city. And so, now, can I, since we moved him to the coast, can, I don't know, that's not, I'm not going to be able to do enough damage to, to kill him. But I'll pop him again. I sure as hell will. All right. I don't have enough training points to do any more force marching. So that was it. That was my one that was my one magic trick. I can't get a longbow into position or anything fun like that. So that was my one my one trick. Okay, well, I mean it was a good trick. So, you know. There is that. It was a good trick. Uh, you can only hit adjacent, so that's not 
going to do anything. Well, we will go ahead and start moving the, the Navy around the Horn of Nineveh. That way, you know, we can continue to take the fight to his ships. Well, that matters. So, yeah, next turn we'll have Niblet. We will. Uh, okay, how far can this guy get? Can I? Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Can I? Can I take. Oh. Uh, Dude, there has to be a way. I mean, there has to be. A, oh, there is a way. There is a way. I just have to back up a few things. Okay. Well, we're taking Niblet this turn then. Yeah, screw that. We're taking Niblet this turn. I don't even care. I mean, we're, we're still going to do all the the boat thing. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we're doing all that. But. We have to do one. We have to change one attack. The order of the attack. Because this guy moves up here. Right? And then he takes a shot. And then this guy. No. This guy. No. This guy takes a shot, and then this guy kills the thing. But that won't take the city. Uh, there will be no truce. Oh, yeah, it did, because it pushed his boat out. That's right, it pushed. Okay, so we took Niblet this turn. Hell yeah. Okay, so now we're going to kill his ship. What is it? It is a trireme, so... Uh, and dude lost a mangonel in the city. No, uh, it was just an onager. And one trireme. Okay. Uh, and then we're still going to take our, our elephant. Right. And we got the one force march. So we're going to, we're going to use it. And we're still going to push him back so he can't fire on my besiegers and then next turn yes he will probably kill the elephant and the next turn these guys can rally and come over here and crush him but in the meanwhile we can still bring a ship up here to pop him in the face and do another point or two or whatever okay so that's a thing and that's done and then we can still bring these guys up like we had. So you know, all we basically did, I just backed up enough to change to add the moving the longbow into position to hit the city before we struck with our uh, with our infantry. And then that enabled us to take the city this turn. So Niblet is captured. Uh, we lost one elephant this round and Assyria lost an onager a trireme, and another city. Okay, we have 130 orders remaining. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that we... really straight up need to do anymore but I am I am all about just continuing to press our advantage so hell yeah let's let's get in here and do it we're gonna strike toward car a uh, uh, 
I think two catapults to start with. And then this guy, well, he's already, never mind, he's already done his thing. So, I don't know, can we get anybody within range of Tilbarship to, oh, yeah, we can. I can, I can actually get a, uh, an onager right up on that hill and have him unlimbered and put somebody in front of him. It doesn't really matter who, just some random fool in front of him. Okay, can this guy get to the city? Yes, he can. So you guard the city and you, uh, I can't quite get there, okay. So then we'll put um, pikemen in front, right? And then this pikeman goes here, and we can go ahead and give the city a little tap. It won't really amount to a lot of damage. That's not the point. Uh, but we can at least begin doing damage. So we're at 51 of 57 points. Uh, this guy. Go ahead and take your Eagle Eye promotion. This guy. Oh, he's already, you've already moved him. Okay, well, come over here and start just pouring fire onto Till Barship. Okay, that's kind of an ad hoc. Uh, Sieging force, we're not really set up to besiege it because we don't have any. We, have, we just got the one siege engine up there, you know, but it it's enough for now and it's working. So we'll, uh, we'll improve it over the next couple of turns. But at least for now, we've got we've got something plinking away at the city. And that, that's a good start. Okay. Now over here, can we? Oh hell yeah. Okay. Well then let's let's go ahead and start. Uh, you know, doing a little damage to uh, Kare. Yeah. Okay. So we got a few guys down here, and we'll just start start causing what mayhem we can I mean you know uh, at this point we're kind of we're kind of just kicking a serious corpse it, there's really they haven't been able to mount any serious resistance for quite a while now that's not to say I mean they've, they've gotten lucky a couple of times and and I've gotten careless, and they've killed some guys, and and that's that's totally fair play. But as far as mounting a credible threat, more than just a surprise attack here and there, yeah, not not really, not really. You know, I don't even we don't even need this guy really. I mean, we'll I guess we'll move him up here, but it. It's not needed. Okay, well, I think I think that's uh, we 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 could send a trade mission to. Oh, let's do a foreign marriage and a and a trade mission. Foreign marriage. We're really old, so we're probably gonna die anyway. But what the hell? We'll send the thing, and if it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, then you know. No big deal.
So of interest, in the time it took us to, to take that first city, we have essentially been able to conquer uh, the rest of Assyria. I think that's pretty cool. Okay. Okay. Let him become vengeful because we're going to die next year anyway. And that'll, okay, he'll be vengeful against the dead guy. You know, we don't care. He did not attack my elephant. So round 17, we lost nothing. I don't know. Um... I don't know what we're going to be able to accomplish this round because, I mean, we we took the city last round, so that was our big our big thing that we were working on. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Uh, yeah. So this guy send the ships back home to get repair. Okay. So that's done. Uh, this guy. It's healed. I don't know. Let's see if we can take Kare this turn. Uh, that's probably going to be a big ask because I don't have any I got enough for two force marches okay well no because I don't want to move these longbow we're going to need them for for this I don't know Let's see. Uh, what do we have up here? Well, let's, okay. Let's try to take to a barship. We've already got longbows in position. We've got this little guy here. Let's just see, you know, what can we conceivably do? We'll move this guy, take a shot. This guy takes his shot. Another shot. Okay, we bring the conscript around. We bring this guy around. Yeah, okay, so we're not, that's not going to be enough to take it, but we'll knock the shit out of it this turn. Well, that, that's fine. Okay, so we'll have Till Barship next turn, for sure. There's no, there's no way it can survive another, another round of that. Um, Kare, yeah, that's wishful thinking. We're not going to have that this turn, but we will have it next turn. We'll have it next turn easily. 
Well, we ain't getting it this turn. It's just not going to happen. Okay. And then I'll bring the onager up here and unlimber, and he's in range. And we're just going to need the one because there's no walls there. So next turn, we will have uh, Tobars of Ankare off the board. And the only city, how many cities is this here you have left anyway? They've got. Three, four, five, they've got six, right? So there's the, the two that were besieging, that leaves four left. There's Kahat, leaves three left. There's Nineveh, leaves two left. Yeah, I don't know where the other two are. Must be further north that we can't see, or... Well, it looks like Rome's up there. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's got, but it says, he's, oh, he's, no, he's got one strong city. So he's got four cities. The one strong city and then the three legendaries. Total of four. We're besieging two, so he'll have two, which are Kahat and uh, Nineveh. And that's it. That'll be his last two cities. So we have just about conquered all of Assyria in the last 17 years. Uh, all right, I think we're done. I think we are, uh, yeah, done, because we're going to lose our guy, so we're not going to send him on a mission, because that would just be wasted orders, and we can just yeah, bank them and whatever. Right on the cusp. Won't be long now. The anti father uh, almost lived long enough to see the conquest completed. It looked like we lost a conscript just then because he came out with a swordsman and a pike, I think. So he's making one. I mean, you know, got to admire it. He's down to four cities and he's still trying like hell to to keep himself going. I admire the the stick with itness. We got Eritrea rebels to deal with. Let's uh let's not forget about that. These are both six years, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, keep the favor. We got money. I'd rather that he owe me a favor. That sounds excellent. We will take the civics because that's going to transfer over to search, I believe. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, okay, we're going to have him become endeared. And here we go, the first of our wonders. So the via is finished. Going to, uh, yeah, we're not going to do any of that. Okay. So we're we're two points away from 
hey, we won a thing and got some more money. And we're not bothering with governors. We're not bothering with governors. Okay. So the next wonder that finishes or the next city that flips over. Yeah, so when Asher flips, we win. We win next turn. Okay, well, uh, before that happens, oh, well, we lost, yes, so round 18, us, we lost one conscript. Okay, uh, keep track right to the very end, man, because we're not, yeah, it's not over till it's over, so right to the end no no see uh okay yeah so we want to do that we want to do that. We'll come out here and crush. Well, I don't know that crush would be the right word, but dude, could could you could, could no, that's the wrong guy. Yeah, you you who have not attacked yet, move up here. Okay. What else do we have in the neighborhood? Well, hang on. I'm not even going to worry about that because we're going to win next turn anyway. So let me finish the siege off, and then I'll see if I can find. So we killed a, a pike. Syria lost one pike who was the defender of that whatever city, Tilbarship, we just took over. Okay, so here we're gonna, dang, he, oh, because he repaired, I didn't take that, I didn't factor that into my, into my planning, so we are gonna need to, we'll bring up, shit, we'll just bring up a second and a third onager. And this guy can do what? Can you can you materially participate it now? Because we, well, I mean, we could. Get, okay, let's get him all the way around there. That's fine. Okay, and then um, this monitor. Yeah. So if we put him here and unlimber him. And then he'll be able to fire next turn. Okay, so we'll have three onagers on his ass next turn that can just unleash heck. In the meantime, we have four of these dudes. He spent a turn repairing and that gave him the 10 hit points back. That's why we're not taking it this turn, but that's okay. So he's for sure falling next turn. Yeah, I'm not going to send anything else up there. I mean, I could I could force march a swordsman up there, but it wouldn't be enough to kill him. And, I mean, since it wouldn't be enough to kill him, I don't know that there's any real value to it. The guys that are there, he, he may, especially if he's got, like, another dude waiting in the shadows or something, he may be able to kill another unit, but then he's just, he's just gone, so... I don't know that there's any. Okay, so he's retreated to Nineveh. And we're going to, yeah, so I can move around the city or around the peninsula. Yes, dude, move around the peninsula, please. And, and hit him. 
displays of the computers just lagging horribly now. Okay, so we'll move here. Oh, and for some reason, okay, whatever. Well, we still got it doing. So these guys are rounding the bend. Um, we will go ahead and move. We'll just like advance to down the peninsula. Uh, I'll leave this uh, pike here to guard the city, finish its capture, and then we'll just generally advance toward saying, and I want to advance and unlimber as I go, and that way, and actually I want him here on that way if he decides to come out of the city and, and play then we know we got we got guys one lumber and ready to go so okay well uh, he's Yeah, okay. We'll unlimber him as well. I don't think he can get... No, he can't get far enough. So, that's fine. We'll just move him to there. Okay. And then we got these ships that we had brought home to rest and recover. And they will join their the other half of the fleet and we'll continue around the peninsula time is getting short for syria pretty quiet turn though i mean we lost one unit and assyria lost one unit we captured another city but it was, yeah, yeah, fairly quiet. Okay, that's, we're ending, oh no, I have, I have two cities I need to look at for production. And yeah, we're not going to need any more ships. So I'm just going to set, uh, I'm just going to set probably both of these on continuous Council. That's Tushpa. Uh, okay, Tushpa can build walls because we're, we're fairly close to a frontier, so sure. All right, ending the turn. We'll cash out the 11 extra orders for money and see what that. But yeah, this should, this should be the end because uh, Aster is going to flip and that's going to put us over the threshold by one point. Okay. So he killed two units that turn. He's fighting back. Good for him. That last minute show of defiance, I approve. Won't you, oh, I forgot about the dang rebels in Eritrea. Well, that's too late anyway. Well, okay. Yeah, cataphract. Well, it's kind of a good thing we won because that would have been annoying, an annoying turn to deal with. But so that, 
Uh, yeah. So victory on turn. What is it? 170, I guess. It showed a minute ago, but. And that's the end of that. Victory by conquering most of Assyria. Uh, okay. Well, let's show me how this came to pass. We'll watch the little video of our. Uh, yeah. Okay. Show us. Show it. Here we go. Good exploration in the early game. Fairly rapid founding of the second city. Okay. Jumping out with the scouts. To, yeah, that's good. That's good. Third city coming pretty reasonably quick. That's nice. Kind of a lull there between the third and fourth. Good scouting. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, here's the, we're at the part where I took the save over, and you can see there's there was a lot of like, dyna dynamism going on earlier because he was doing a lot of exploring and expanding and all that. And then there's this, then there's this period where the whole thing kind of pauses, where we don't really. I mean, you see the incremental increases in the borders and stuff where I'm buying tiles, but we don't really do anything for like 25 years, so it just sort of freezes for us. But then all hell breaks loose on 
I'll see you here toward the end, but nice. That was a long time coming. Okay, well, that was fun, and that was a very cool game, and I'm I'm real glad that I got uh, that this save wound up finding its way to me because I had a lot of fun putting this together, and that was a cool game to play out to the to the end, and I am super happy that we got to get some revenge on the Assyrians for on behalf of uh, the guy that sent the save in originally. So awesome. I hope you guys uh, got a kick out of that too. And I will see you next time.